Uh, someone tried to rondo my blood last week. <laughs> Come on. Oh, yeah. They rondo my blood till something. <laughs> till like till That's a meme that I missed. And so I'm just kind of running along behind it going, yeah. <laughs> my, then, yeah. She really well, does uh-huh. do that to me until I also, yes. That's my uh, secret true. with all memes, Scott. I'm always running behind them. <laughs> <it. laughs> the Harlem Shake. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what, what is the proper course of action to take when somebody tries to rondo your blood? Uh, well, first of all, you say a a nice firm, Mm. uh -uh. (laughs) uh-uh, not gonna happen. You do like a little pose. You you put your Mm -hmm. weight on one hip, you know, you make it very clear that your blood is not available for today's rondoing. Is this like something like, like kind of like an, because like a lot of times with vampire shit, like it's so much of it's just metaphors or not even metaphors. It's just like in, in very sexual in a yeah, lot of ways. Sure, and stuff yeah. In very ways. So like, I wonder if there is sort of like a, like, so if someone tries to rondo, like an abstinence only sort of education <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. or vampirism, it's like, what do you say if someone tries to rondo your blood? Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you start to sense a leading theme in a sonata or other work of art, <laughs> And you think that that theme might recur? You get the fuck out of there. <laughs> you know what I say when somebody tries to rondo my blood? What do you say? Die, monster. You don't belong in this world. Uh, this, uh, just you talking about the noticing themes. It's just like, again, now I'm thinking about like, yeah, like it's like it's like a true love waste type thing. But <laughs> like, like your light motif should only blend with one other person's light motif. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you know what your light motif can't play over ever, like you know everyone else's it's not going to be special yeah if you yeah. attach no. that light motif to one song and then try and attach it to another song it's not going to stick as well you know yeah it's going to lose gonna some of that so, adhesive yeah take that Sondheim <laughs> everyone's going to be so <laughs> sick of your uh, theme uh, during the end credits they're not even going to notice it anymore so many possible worlds but we got this one so many Welcome to the worst of all possible worlds, the first and only podcast where you never get sick of our theme. I'm the worst of all possible Brian's. I'm the worst of all possible AJ's. And I'm the worst of all possible Josh's. And joining us uh, for a third time, uh, we have, Ooh. right? Third time? Is yeah, it? That's the hat trick. It's the charm. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, hell yeah. Hell yeah. We have a f- noted fan favorite incredible game developer Scott Benson. I feel like I've been on more than this, but I think it's also because like a couple months ago, um, well actually while we were in production on the trailer for the for the game that we're making, mm, yeah. uh, I actually just like sat and like binge listened to a lot of your back catalog <laughs> oh, hell yeah. or something. Wow. And I was like on, uh, I was I was on enough of it. Like I was only on two episodes, but like together, it's a very long running time. Yeah. yeah. And so sure. I felt like I was like, I was like, I feel like I'm on like half of these episodes, but no, it was actually just <laughs> two episodes and we just went long on them. It was just really I did, funny. It's just hard to was, escape. Yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to tell you that I was very flattered that you put me into the trailer with that horse in the background, just kind of like <laughs> staring dead eyed into the camera. Yeah. That really meant a lot to me. There was, there are definitely points in that trailer where I can like attach to specific things. I think I was listening to on the on the pod. Well, I was That's watching. Excellent. I was I was looking for wit, and I couldn't find wit <laughs> anywhere. You know what? Speaking of speaking of wit, you know what sound I made when I heard just now that Scott listened to all of our episodes. He what? There it is. Yeah. 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 The the one sample that like I was uh, that I actually thought about like weird. So the you know the topic we're talking about has like a lot of like characters and bosses that have mm-hmm. like fairly like wacky names mm-hmm. and stuff or whatever and i just kept like thinking back to this is a complete i'm, I'm calling I'm, I'm doing an overt callback but just oh, yes. i kept getting that like fucking soundbite for like malanga or whatever <laughs> <laughs> what, what, is the providence, so, what is the providence of that of that so actual that sample? That is from a Broadway musical called Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812, written by Dave uh, Malloy, of course, based yes. on roughly five or six chapters of War and Peace. Mm-hmm. And there is oh, a okay. character in that story who shanghais a lady as part of a scheme. And I don't really know what's going on at this point in the show. And no uh-huh. one does. The second no, act is yeah. just a vibe. He, um, yeah, he just uh-huh. kind of comes in and like we all party for like five or six minutes. And then it gets back okay. to the tragic love story. They're throwing pierogies everywhere. And, and uh-huh. you just hear people singing about this guy, Balaga. Balaga. 
So I decided there that I was going okay. to do the funniest thing in the world to myself and to no one else. <laughs> well, and also to Nate Mathea, uh, in yeah. fairness. But <laughs> well, we, for we, that, we are, it was more about just torturing him until he finally true. acquiesced to the joke. And, yeah. you know, we have tortured <laughs> Scott on this show a couple times yeah. now. And so we figured this time around, instead, we would talk about something that is much more enjoyable. Yes. And based on my we, understanding, we turned our also, eyes away from the Lord and towards mm, hellish things. Indeed. Yes. yes. And based on my understanding as well, Scott, this topic, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, is also very much a formative game for you. Hugely. I was trying to think if there's like a running theme of like all my appearances on mm. this show now with these topics. I think it is. <laughs> Uh, e- e- evil th- evil beings being summoned yeah. essentially yeah, 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 yeah. that's the uh, the joining I think even before like I was like yeah let me think about this in game design terms like it's a game that really uh, I think Metroidvanias are unique in that sense we'll get to we can get into this later mm-hmm. of really making people internalize a lot of game design mm-hmm. stuff in ways that a lot of other games don't because like you might think be thinking about levels or mm-hmm. like I need to get this item or this but like as far as just level progression and the way that all these things tie into each other, yeah. like Metroidvanias really do make you think, I can go up to here and now at this point I need to do this and this to progress. Why is this happening in this order? Yeah. yeah. Why can I break it? Can I do all these mm-hmm. things? It, it really invites a level of like very casual kind of game design brain and stuff, which is why I think like, for a, like I mean, I think a lot of people like it in general. I liked it a lot before I thought about, you know, really making video games, mm-hmm. but I think it's also why it's just such like a game designer favorite yeah because it's so like you can just get so like dorky with with it a little bit it it kind of rewards that sort of thing but yeah just huge like i was a huge castlevania fan when i was a kid i just the nes ones and like my first castlevania was the utterly inscrutable uh simon's quest and i loved it (laughs) so my 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 expectation for all the the castlevanias after that was that it was going to be this inscrutable enigmatic slightly trolly I can't figure out what these people are trying to talk to me and like things like what a hor- what a horrible night for a curse is just like such a great weird like just a, such a great weird line it's my, and it's my favorite that. Rogers and Hammerstein song for sure yeah yeah uh, I was gonna make a seven brides for seven brothers joke but that's not Rogers and Hammerstein no that's it? uh oh fuck who it is might that? as fucking yeah it's, it's it's imitation Rogers and Hammerstein there's is what a I'll song say. in that all about sodomy uh it's between God and me Oh, if them women was sobbing, 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 fit to be tied. Every muscle was throbbing, throbbing yeah. from... That is uh, the... Excuse me. I'm going to... I'm going to fucking fact check everyone. The Sabine women. Yes. Uh, mm. so, uh, whatever. I grew up with that musical, which is an utterly, inscru- like an utterly bizarre thing to show anyone <laughs> yeah, no. in, 20, yeah. in modern day. It's an absolutely bizarre thing about a bunch of men kidnapping a bunch of women. Yeah. Uh, and it being all just a fun, fun time. But anyway, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so like my expectation for all the Castlevania games was going to be that level of just weird yeah. mid NES era, like Zelda two fact, Santa do. These are all like, yeah. this is like the era of NES that I kind of came in at where mm. it was a bunch of these side scrolling, very weird games where people would make these very like the first Zelda or like the first Castlevania. There's these really like great evolutions of arcade style games or interesting first stabs at action RPGs. And then they're like. Buddies, let's get fucking weird with it on the second one. And then everyone hated it. And then they went back and tried to make a third one that was a lot more like the first one yeah. kind of thing. But I came yeah. in during the weird uh, moment. So like I kind of had, had, was expecting Castlevania to be a lot weirder than it was. And mm. then it wasn't for several installments, at least to that level. Yeah. And then Symphony of the Night came around yeah. and was like, hey, you know what? Story again. Let's do that. Yeah, shit. let's have yeah. some fun. Right. One thing that I did want to mention is that this is the summer of gaming. I forgot to mm. mention that at the beginning. Mm. I had meant wow. to. And yeah. so congratulations, everyone. <laughs> That's amazing that we made it. And, and so <laughs> here in the summer After the of gaming, spring of books, we did not think we were going to make it. In our old neighborhood in the south side in Pittsburgh, there was some sort of like, like some sort of old storefront that was like one of these things I'm sure you've seen in like neighborhoods where it's like, hey, this building is not like this is still being kept up, but the store has not been open for years oh, and yeah. years oh, and years. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's still somehow kept up and oh, not yeah. falling apart. But like, uh, and it just said like something along the lines of like, there's a sticker that said like 1000 years of like U- Ukrainian orthodoxy or something. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, well, what, is this like, are you celebrating this or are you like prophesying this or whatever? So like, it's, like, it's like, yeah, we're at the beginning of a thousand years of gaming. Excellent. Yeah. And yeah. you know, we, we made it. I that's, feel like that's what the millennium is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It, 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 the millennium. 
That's the final this dispensation. Is the, this, is, this is the latter reign. Yes. So I think, Scott, the, the point that you made about how, you know, Castlevania is such a formative game for so many designers, like that is, I think, a big part of why we wanted to talk with you about it specifically, because mm-hmm. there, 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 there's a handful of games that always come up in the conversations about the best game ever and just like games that are so influential that change the way that we think about how games can be played. You yeah. know, Deus Ex is obviously another one. Mm-hmm. Um, Super Mario Brothers, you know, Gex. What? Gex. Enter the Gecko. Gex, yeah. Gex yeah. Enter the Gecko. Yeah. Um, Specifically Enter the Gecko. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but when it comes to Castle Pennsylvania Symphony of the Night, it is a game that finds its genesis, as you were saying, in earlier games that were still trying to figure out the formula. Mm-hmm. And I think, Brian, you have a little bit yeah. of history about sort of Castlevania and, and things yeah, so, related so to it, right? Castlevania is one of the really old Konami properties. It was originally designed, as many of Konami games of this era were, for the MSX. Uh, in this oh. case, the MSX2. And what like MSX. Metal Gear. Yeah, Metal Gear, the same thing. Uh, MSX was Microsoft trying to get into the Asian market and and succeeding, I should say, Um, Mm -hmm. working towards sort of a standardization for home computers. These were, I I think, in many cases, the kind of computer where you plug it into your TV, like a ZX Spectrum or whatever. They made Metal Gear for the MSX, too, as well as uh, what is called in Japan Akumajo Dracula. They made these sort of parallel projects for the NES. So what's really interesting is like these are not as one to one as possible. They're developed at the exact same time by largely different teams, but they do share certain characteristics. So the MSX uh, Castlevania, which was released overseas first, but it was second in Japan. Um, when it came to Europe first, it was called uh, Vampire Killer. The NES version, just like with Maniac Mansion and with Metal Gear for a while, becomes sort of the definitive version of, right. the, of this game because it's the one that more people play across the whole world. So Akumajo means like devil place or Satan's house or however you want to translate it. Mm-hmm. And so Konami of America in 1987 was like, let's not do that. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's a little hot to use Satan stuff right now, even though Dracula also means small Satan. No one knows that. They just think about the vampire novel and Bela Lugosi. Mm. So they come up with a name over at Konami of America, Castlevania, which is one of my favorite titles, I think, of anything of all time. It's so good. It's brilliant. I mean, it tell like it's cheesy. It's it's horror. It's it's castles. It's always about the castle where we have always lived in the castle. Uh, yeah. We're doing it, baby. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's interesting, right? Because the the one thing that all of the Castlevania games have in common is that the castle is kind of the main character of the game, right? Yeah. Or close to it. Yeah, it's definitely like this is one of the like we get into this. One of my f- things that I love about this series is that it is like. So like, yeah, he's got an interdimensional shape-shifting castle. Just fucking deal with it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. They yeah. don't like I, I'm assuming in like and I know in some of the, the latter ones that I have not played, uh, they kind of get into trying to like kind of create some more lore for it. But it's just the fact that it's like, uh, hey, check it out. Uh, it's just it's just different this time. Well, I, I yeah. feel like it, that's just that's just how it is. Yeah, I feel like it follows sort of the Legend of Zelda thing, right? Where it is sort of the same three parts that are put in. You know, it's Ganon, it's always mm-hmm. Zelda, it's always Link, and it's always Hyrule. But Hyrule is always different, and you're never mm-hmm. like, why is Hyrule different? You're just like, oh, cool, a yeah. new Hyrule. And, yeah, and until there, they try like to the, explain it with yeah, the timeline. There's the one thing where they're like, oh yeah. yeah, there's actually three branching timelines that then become one. Timeline timeline but like <laughs> the people making the games don't actually give a shit about that no, that's shut something up. I don't care. it's like a, a different legend. department it's yeah. the legend of zelda like, come on because then anyway. you get to tears of the kingdom and it's just like yeah we've we've consolidated the timeline with breath of the wild like we've finally done it and tears of the kingdom comes in and goes fuck you the timeline <laughs> is meaningless because there is like continuity between these first several mm-hmm. uh castlevanias yeah. but who the fuck cares yeah and and like, it's just like and there's continuity in the castlevania series the book dracula is canon which yes. I personally love as a big fan uh-huh. of the book. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, like there's a whole side story with the descendants of Quincy Morris, who was the Texas yeah. cowboy who stuck his Bowie knife in Dracula on the road back to the castle. I believe that's that's bloodlines. Yeah. Uh, the one of those for Genesis and arcade, I believe. Yep. And there wow. is, there's a, a DS game that, that continues that storyline. Oh, too. nice. Uh, cool. Portrait of Ruin. So the NES Castlevania is very straightforward. It is a linear action platformer 
Um, it's taking a lot of inspiration from universal horror. You know, you fight against uh, Frankenstein's monster and all of this stuff. The MSX game is more like you're going through a series of sort of mini Zelda dungeons. Mm. You have to find what the exit is. You have to find the key to the exit and then you have to bring the key to the exit. Mm. But for the most part, it's still kind of linear. You go in one one level, the next level, the next level, the next level. Uh, At the same time, uh, Metroid was released by Nintendo in 1986 and the first Legend of Zelda was released in 1986 and both of these prized uh, a different form of exploration one that went in a non-linear fashion where you unlocked items that would allow you to move further uh, in different directions so with Legend of Zelda it's usually stuff you get from a menu you open that up you pick the item out you use it and with Metroid it's usually about something that you do with the controls that are already available to you, right? You press select or you hold down a button or you press down twice or something like that. Then Castlevania 2 comes out, Simon's Quest, leading yeah. and the angry to... video game nerd is born. <laughs> mm-hmm. This also ends up on the cover for the very second Nintendo Power ever published. It is a oh, very yeah. infamous it fucking rule. It's, oh, so, it's so cool. It's so cheesy. It's a photograph. Yeah. It is a live human model holding a head of Dracula with these glowing red eyes and yes there were complaints there it were so many so complaints hard. yeah it's so good because <laughs> those early nintendo powers i feel you know this is like for for any of the folks who are you know under the age of like 50 or <laughs> yeah. whatever no, but like they, um, they were those first ones in particular had a lot of like claymation mm-hmm. or sort of like it was yeah. like a lot of like models and stuff that were photographed in kind of cool ways like that first uh, issue i think was mario 2 yep. has this like really nice sort of like just seems like you know plasticine sort of uh uh pleistocene the era yeah. the, uh, the plasticine <laughs> kind of uh model um and stuff and it had that and it had a lot of really just awesome actually throughout most of the run of that magazine especially early on they had awesome awesome covers yeah. awesome yeah. by different artists and stuff and but that that Castlevania one is fucking just infamous. It's just so dope, it's though. It's so like, funny. You're, you're like eight seeing that, and you're like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. No one's ever made anything cooler than this. And no one ever will. This is like those like kind of like trad, like, you know, Twitter accounts are like, uh, we used to make great things or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's just that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> return to Castlevania 2. Well, yeah. and there was a lot of returning in Castlevania 2. Simon has like an overworld map, and you sort of go to different areas and come back to them after like purchasing upgrades there are npcs that give you hints and like some of them are telling you real things some of them are lying (laughs) all of them are horribly translated so you can't tell what any of it is supposed to be anyway it's it's very much like zelda 2 is a goofy dick in that game go to the waterfall there's a key there we promise and you get to the waterfall and die like look over shoulder at duck and you're like, what the fuck does this mean? <laughs> and later on, you're, you're like, oh, that was mistranslated. That's utter gibberish. You're yeah. like, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> but you got value out of that game, though, you know, because yeah. you had to play it so much in order to unlock even the most basic oh, yeah. level. I never got anywhere close to beating it. I got like pretty <laughs> as far into it as like the points where it's like, hey, oh, no, you had to kneel at something or like walk into water in in some sort of spot that you just didn't you wouldn't have recognized right, it otherwise. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, th- there was, yeah, there's like a day and night cycle that's built into yeah. it, too. I mean, there's a lot that they're just throwing out there, and it's it's really admirable. And it's like Zelda 2. It's like Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, it's a it's sort of this black sheep sequel that then sort of retrenches mm-hmm. the franchise into going back to their roots in the next installment. Um, and that's in uh, 1988. So we're still yeah. nine years out from Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Yeah. So then the next game is Castlevania 3. Uh, I think Simon's quest, you know, went a little bit into the future because it's the same character as the first one. Castlevania three jumps into the past. Uh, you follow a, a different shitty games. A, a, like ass. Yeah, you follow an ancestor, another Belmont. There's this whole l- l- lore that they're building up now about the Belmonts having this lineage where they all have this one whip that they've been carrying for a thousand years of Ukrainian orthodoxy. And they're, <laughs> they're... A- amazing title. Like, like there's a story kind of thing at the beginning of that and it's seriously like dracula was in, was invading all the countries in europe or in europe turning them from good countries into bad countries <laughs> and i'm like i'm like oh my god this is just like sort of like bad like liberal sort of like pop like politics or whatever yeah. it's like it used to be a good cu- country but then it turned bad yeah. <laughs> Like what happened is like Dracula got it. Wait, I just had a thought, which is, Mm. you know, 
Fa- uh, Shen Yun is what they say 5,000 years of Chinese history. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What if what you saw is just the Ukrainian Shen Yun? Oh, and possibly. all they do is like that. they get I'm t- out I'm there. I'm entirely in favor of that. Yeah. And they sing yeah. and dance about how like they need NATO to give them more cluster bombs. Yeah. It's Eastern Europe before Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> it's Shen Yun, Eastern Europe before Dracula. I, uh, I, that thing is still around. I mean, oh, like, off topic, but like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just weird. Like, I occasionally see it and it just reminded me of like, it, my first thought was like, oh, yeah, when I was like unmedicated for depression, that was like what my Steam stats look like. <laughs> just, just me sitting and playing Civilization for 5,000 years. Absolutely. <laughs> Whatever. I really want to see Shen Yun. I'm never going to give these people like my money, but I kind of want to see like the, the Carl Mark tsunami wave or whatever yeah. that sweeps across. There, there and has to be a slime tutorial out there somewhere of Shen Yun. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there is. It's it's kind of weirdly boring um, in terms of like set design and things like that. But the dancing is pretty cool. What 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 you mm. should do and what we should mm. do the podcast is yeah. go and see it in the South because they calibrate the show to different audiences. So when they do it in New York, oh my God. they do sort of one angle on it. But in the South, they do a whole like musical numbers about gay people getting thrown into hell. I I which okay. is what That's, I need to live. Yeah, I was gonna say that's mm-hmm. interesting. I disagree that we should do it, but I'll take that <laughs> note under advisement. So, uh-huh. Brian, you were saying Castlevania 3, that comes out in September 1990 for the Nintendo yeah. Entertainment System. Yeah, so this is a more straightforward game, but it's not totally straightforward. They've taken a cue from, like, uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Ghosts and Goblins. It has branching paths, which mm. then lead to multiple endings, so you can play it again and try to figure out how to get the other branches. Um, then Super Castlevania 4 on the SNES... Uh, which uses a lot of uh, uh, what is it called? Mode seven graphics, yeah. a lot of spinning seven. rooms. That was a return to tradition, yes. like sequel that, for sure. That, that one they got yeah. uh, a new director on. Um, all of these games are kind of weird because they wouldn't allow their staff to use their real names. Konami yeah, didn't right. allow actual credits, so all the yeah. credits were like puns on like old '30s movie stars and shit like that. Uh, that has changed in a lot of re-releases they've actually put in the names of actual developers but mm. um good so super castlevania 4 is kind of a remake of castlevania 1 it's not really mm. using the maps or anything as a framework but it's a straightforward action game telling the story of simon uh and i think it also has a couple of little branches here and there um yeah eventually we get we, there's spin-offs there are other things going on but then we get to rondo of blood no, uh, wait. <laughs> no. Rondo my blood, my ass. I won't Rondo my blood. <laughs> this was made for uh, something that does not exist. I don't know. Outside of Japan, I don't think the PC engine super CD ROM. Uh, yes, it, the TurboGrafx 16 did have a CD add on available in the United States, but there were okay. not very many games actually released. Yeah. Yeah. Consoles okay. used to just be so much weirder. Yeah. yeah. And shit. Yeah. Like I saw someone the other day talking about this, about how like a lot of the sort of like like received history of video games now is so North America centric. Mm-hmm. That it's like a like you guys are like missing out on like all these other consoles. It's like, uh, did you know in Brazil, actually, the TurboGrafx-16 won that won the console war. Yeah, it was actually the main uh, contender until like last year or something and you're like, or something uh-huh. like that. That's I'm making that one up. But you just find out stuff about like that or like uh, people in um, the, the UK had and I forget the what ZX they, Spectrum. Yeah, the whole and, those, right. the and, Commod- and the, and the, and the Commodore Amiga. Don't forget yep. the Commodore Amiga. And, yeah. and so like the, the UK had this huge like homebrew scene people just mm-hmm. making games in their living rooms and mailing them to people and and the u.s and canada had like shareware but it was not on the same level uh, yeah. as the uk there's a really great one by um uh, there's an article by the um artist roman muradov who grew up i don't know if it was in russia or just like the general uh, mm. vicinity but he was talking about the kind of bootleg feeling console that they had access to uh at the time it was just really fascinating kind of article mm. about it and stuff. Mm. And I always like, I'm always like, I, I picked Brazil out because they, there's always stuff. Like I always think about Brazil because like, the, like you'd hear like, Oh yeah. Like electronic gaming monthly Brazil said this. And I'm like, okay. And then like things <laughs> like magazines up here would shudder, but then in, like Brazil or Argentina, they'd still be going strong. And you're like, Oh, oh okay. Weird. And huh. it's like, yeah, the PS2 was actually the top seller in like Peru this year right. or something. And it's like 2015. And you're like, this is amazing. And they're still making new games for it. Yeah. That kind of yeah. thing. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and to the point of, you know, Rondo of Blood, yeah, it was it was released for the PC Engine Super CD-ROM, which was a 
You know, the PC Engine did pretty well in Japan. The TurboGrafx-16, which was its North American equivalent, not so much. Rip. So it got, this game also has branching paths. This has like voice acting, you know, it's much smoother animation. They're playing with it's a, very anime. with like yeah. 3D elements. You can play as a couple of other characters throughout the, the game on replays and things like that. Uh, it gets a remake on the Super Nintendo because they're trying to get it into the American market. Mm. Dracula X. And yeah. it sucks. It's fucking terrible. No, <laughs> no one enjoys it. And th- this leads to a bit of a shakeup. So let me talk about Koji Igarashi here for a second. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes goes by Iga. Just Iga. Mm-hmm. Um, and he wears all black except for yeah. a leather cowboy hat. He, he's definitely a guy that you're like, that motherfucker's got a duster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. yeah. He's, he's one of like, the, you've, you've got your sort of like weird Japanese guys in game yeah. development. Guys like, uh, yeah, Kojima, Suda51, and, and Iga yeah. is one of those guys. Uh, Iga makes probably the more like accessible games out of sort of the, the batch of like odd mm-hmm. fellows yeah. you know he's not out there making things like odama or seaman or yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. he's he's really self-aware like you yeah. the whole thing yeah. like he's he's clearly I mean, no pun intended like vamping it up like in a fun yeah. way yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where, where it's like i mean it's not just like japanese but just like a lot of like you know dudes who are kind of like weird like creator mm-hmm. he's a personality kind of or whatever yeah. where i'm like are you in on the joke of like that this is kind of theatrical and he is he is 100 yeah, in on it like he yeah. just seems like a like a like a cool guy yeah, yeah. In that in that respect, yeah. I mean, when you run the Castlevania franchise for 12 years, you know, before yeah. retiring and then making a very similar Castlevania <laughs> franchise, yeah. but legally... Legally, definitely not Castlevania. Yeah, legally yes. not Castlevania, yeah. but basically Castlevania. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you, gotta, you gotta be a vampire. You gotta dress like Dracula. Yeah. So, so Iga starts as a programmer. Um, he gets to Konami, and he's working on educational software. And I don't, I don't know a ton about sort of the edutainment educational software zone in Japan, but it seems like from the things that I have seen in the past, it's a little bit more like small batch. You're selling games to schools specifically. They're not going to be on store shelves like, uh, like the edutainment of the U S in the mid nineties. Um, or they'll be made for specific purposes, like a lot of the Maxis uh, training games, these simulations and everything. So he's working on educational software that apparently like none of the things that he works on ship at that point in time. Uh, and he jumps over to some of the regular games. He, he then switches over to writing and uh, writes the scenarios and the scripts for a dating sim called Tokimeki Memorial, yes. uh, which is another one that was PC Engine Super CD-ROM, didn't come stateside at the time. Uh, this is while Rondo of Blood is in production, and he's dating someone who is working on Rondo of Blood. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so th- she would come over and talk about, like, well, maybe maybe write this this way or something like that. And then he'd spend a lot of his spare time. He really didn't like working on this game. But he, no, he, he really went did over that. and was just, like, playing Rondo of Blood. And, and you know, and they, they eventually got married. That's his wife. Uh-huh. Um, oh. And Tokimeki Memorial was... A, a flashpoint. It was extremely successful. It yeah. was a big, big deal. And he said, "I don't want to work on the sequel. I, I don't really, I, I don't really jibe with this sort of thing." He said, "He said, quote, I have no more romance to give." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. and he, and he's the father of like Tokimeki Memorial is like the father of all dating sims. Like it is, it yeah, it's, led it's, to that. It's boom. a hugely influential game in that field, and he he just goes to Konami and he's like, "Can you can you transfer me?" And they're like, "Sure." Which department do you want? And even with the success of Tokimeki Memorial, he was shocked. Like he he, he didn't realize mm-hmm. just how much sway he had. So he was like, "Well, give me Castlevania." Yeah. Well, and some something that I notice about like in interviews with him is he comes across as a very humble guy. Like mm. he just wants to make good games, and he gets frustrated when bureaucracy doesn't allow him to do that. And at this point. Konami was willing to assign people to projects they actually wanted to do. Yeah. And uh-huh. a great opportunity for him here. Yeah. So he worked on a, a 32X Castlevania game. And then, well, Sega, with its perennial story, was not doing great. And mm, uh, right. so they pulled off. They, they, they killed the 32X project entirely. And he joined Symphony of the Night as a writer, scenario uh, editor, and the original director ends up leaving partway through production. He gets promoted. And so Iga gets promoted. Uh, his official credit is, I think, assistant director. But he, it, yeah. he's the director from that point onward. What he was noting in Castlevania games 
was the difficulty and the linearity means that some people are just going to blaze through it, right? And so the difficulty ends up becoming sort of a moot point because the whole idea is to make it take more time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have a bunch of people who are just going to hit certain walls and stop playing altogether, right? That's the classic story of old games. And so he's like, how do we fix that? And, you know, the genre that that births out of this is called Metroidvania. He didn't really look at Metroid all that much. Yeah, Mm. he was was really going off of Zelda. Bizarre. Yeah, I have. have It is a Metroid game. So I actually I have a I I did some research on this because I'm like, surely at some point he must have mentioned Metroid. Apparently he had never heard the phrase Metroidvania until like three or four years ago when he saw it in a Facebook post oh, about funny. Symphony of the Night. Wow. But this is like Jeremy Parrish's lasting contribution yeah. to games yeah. is the term Metroidvania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I dug a little deeper and like literally nobody who worked on Symphony of the Night will like talks about Metroid at all. But yeah. somebody once asked uh, the creator of Simon's Quest, Hitoshi Akamatsu, if Metroid inspired the game and he said no, it was a game called The Maze of Gallius, which, wouldn't you know it, was also made by Konami. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah, they, were looking, that. they were looking inward, I guess, uh, yeah. for the most part. So, I, I, because, I, you know, if you have, so if you want to thank somebody for like the founding and like the, the big flashpoint in gaming, go back to the guy who made The Maze of Gallius. <laughs> All right. That classic, yeah. that classic, uh, Game. I've actually I've never heard of this one, and now I have to go right after this. Uh, well, I'm yeah. actually yeah. Uh, I, I have heard of it, and I actually have a uh, Ryuhei Shogaki shrine set up in my uh, bedroom. Oh, so naturally, uh, yeah. I'm going to be I've you know seen going I've, off there yeah. to give my give my offering, and yeah. will it be a rondo of blood. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you know it. <laughs> the rondo of blood for, on me yeah. for everyone. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I mean, for God's sake, I, I had all these notes when I was playing the game about Super Metroid and all this stuff and how they took ideas from Super Metroid and made them better. No, they never played the fucking game. Crazy. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. someone must have played I, it. I'm sure I'm on the team. There are people on the team, s- yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say they they would have, it was such a huge monster hit. Right, like, yeah. They would, they would have been aware But this is the thing that happens on way. A lot in these games, too, is that Castlevania will rhyme with Metroid and they'll kind of trade off ideas as the franchise Mm -hmm. goes on. The the first game that actually the only Castlevania game I had played before this was Dawn of Sorrow for the DS. And it's Mm -hmm. great. So good. But uh, one of the mechanics in Dawn of Sorrow is you can absorb souls into you and you like take on the abilities of that, which is something that Metroid Fusion had done a couple years um, before that with the absorption of different um, X of the X genes. X virus, yeah. The X viruses. So they're always playing off each other. I do wonder if this is something where if you did a deep dive into the origins of Metroid uh, or Super Metroid, they'd be like, well, we were really actually inspired by this game, Labyrinth of Where. The Maze of Gallus. Like, <laughs> it is um, the yeah, Urtex. I, I do wonder if it's something like a, this is just sort of like concurrent sort of evolution because you're all like, you're just, you're both grabbing from things that are kind of in the air. Yeah. It's like, we see a lot in sure. like game development of like a, oh, well, why do all the games suddenly have this or whatever? Right. It's like, well, it's because like there was a lot of different people that were kind of poking at something from different angles or whatever and it's like you're both digging into a chamber Mm -hmm. and you're just like you're already sitting there and just like two pickaxes come through the wall from different (laughs) directions and you've kind of been like oh okay it's like the like people joke about the, the the everything game uh, these days oh, yeah. it's like what most big triple a games have been or, or map games right if you want to we want to call them that which is the uh zelda actually breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom are kind of like uh more breath of the wild is sort of nintendo's like stab at that of like right. a, mm. climb up a thing open map get points on the map to go to that map here's crafting here's leveling up here's all these other things and it's all these systems sort of like folded into the point where it's like a lot of those games are just like just pure systems like maybe bloat a, a little bit i'm editorializing here kind of mm, sure uh, thing with that but it's in part because but like a lot of people who are making those games did not come from like there's no er example of that genre it kind of just came out of a bunch of different things yeah. you see a lot of in like yeah. kind of you know quote unquote indie games uh too of like well you know like suddenly there's like a lot of platformers that are like somewhat sentimental or something and it's like well it's because uh, there's a lot of people who are, grew up on platformers and who then wanted to actually go off and like say something right. different or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they felt, oh, I felt like that this gave me permission to do this or maybe the lower entry level. And it's like you just kind of see these things. They're not necessarily all ripping each other off, but it's like a, oh, it turns out now people who do this can also do this other thing. Mm-hmm. 
you're going to get a lot more people trying that other thing now. A lot of games about cats in the rust belt these days. It's yeah. Super <laughs> fucked. Super fucked. Yeah. But the other thing that they bring in here too, and this is really important because Castlevania has always had this really distinctive weapon, right? This whip, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the vampire killer. And, yes. yeah. and it swings back very briefly and it can hit an enemy if it's standing directly behind you. And then it swings forward a very long amount, and then you can sort of whip it around in some of the later games. Um, yeah, this is the uh, signature weapon of the Belmont family, yeah. who are our mm-hmm. vampire slayers throughout the early Castlevania yeah. games, pre-Symphony of the and Night. And when one thinks about dispatching a vampire, we think whips. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then so for this game, they've, they've decided that they're going to have leveling and they're going to have gear. So you have armor that you can interchange and you have different weapons that you can equip, none of which are whips. So this yeah. game releases in 1997 on the PlayStation one. It gets a little bit of a, a, a remake for the Sega Saturn a few months later. The It doesn't sell great in the United States. No, the not publicity is not strong. It's a two dimensional game in the era where everything is supposed to be pivoting to 3D, but it picks up steam and eventually it does sell well. And it's still it has a very long tail. People still buy Castlevania Symphony of the Night today. It gets a bunch of Mm. uh, Game Boy Advance sequels that are also using the same format. There are at this time also 3D Castlevanias coming out that no one likes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Rip. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like a I remember when it came out like playing it and being like, this is fucking rules. And part of just because I always liked good sprite work. In, yeah. In games. Yeah. Like when, sure. it, when it came gorgeous. to like, I was definitely never someone who was like that first era, that early 3D era is like maybe my least favorite time mm-hmm. for actually maybe not least, like maybe PS2 era or something or whatever. Cause that first like PS1 era, there was so many people just throwing so much shit at the wall. It's like Final Fantasy VII. It's not like my favorite game from that series. Like, like I think Final Fantasy VI is just definitely superior story wise and everything. Sure. But I love FF Seven because it's such a kitchen sink game because no yes. one knew what the fuck yes. they were doing yes. Yet yes. at all. And that's why it, that's why it rules. It's so yeah. it's so cool. And it's funny because like Castle like Symphony of the Night is not like it's it's sort of a kitchen sink game, but just them going. We can still use all these sprites, though, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, yeah. yes, God bless you, you can. Yeah. They yeah. threw most of the kitchen sink at it, and we will be taking things yeah. out of that kitchen sink they over the course of this episode. Sink into it, yes. They yeah. sure did. Yeah. We might as well get started by talking about what happens at the beginning of yeah. this game, right? Because one thing that's so clever about the beginning of Symphony of the Night is it picks up Right where Rondo of Blood left off. Like, yeah. well, you are overlaps. literally playing that scene. Yeah, you, you are playing the final boss of Rondo of Blood again. Mm-hmm. And so you are Richter Belmont, right? You've come to Dracula's castle to defeat him and it save humanity. 1792. Yeah, baby. And everything looks like it's 150 S- years S- later. Yeah. 17. I'm you hanging up on you, AJ. You're the stairs. Booted. You come into this room, you see Dracula himself sitting on a throne. Being all sexy, drinking a rondo of blood. And and you hear this, one of the most iconic dialogues in all of video games. Sing along at home if you know it. Die, monster. You You don't don't belong belong in in this world. world. It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. I was called here by humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. Holy fuck. Your (laughs) lives are as empty as your soul. Mankind ill needs a savior such as you. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? Uh, this is really good because all of us, everyone in America, of course, knew Rondo of Blood and could quote the ending of it already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just so good. This immediately got us. We're like, oh, yeah, Rondo of Blood, that game that we all played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know? Well, I, I was uh, like, I was like there's, hell yeah. There's probably a lot more because there are aspects of this game that are just like not communicated to you in the game at all. It's like there's probably a lot going on in the manual. So I looked up the manual and no, not at all. No. Uh, I mean, you wow. do get no. some lore. You get back backgrounds on like who Dracula is and who Alucard is. It's Dracula backwards. <gasps> oh, uh, no. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Who Richter and Maria are and everything. But like, it really just seems like it's like, as you all know, 
It's yeah. so good. Well, this is kind of a funny thing because the game gets re-released a number of times. Uh, first on the PSP as the Dracula X Chronicles, where you first have to beat Rondo of Blood before you can unlock it. It is a total secret in that game, which Whoa. would have sucked because I don't like I don't like the action platformers. I like I like the 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 Symphony of the yeah, Night. I, I yeah. tried to play Rondo that Blood as a as a, such a fuck you design. It's great. Oh my God. I mean, yeah. I guess yeah. the idea was that it was just supposed to be a surprise. And for that one, they re-recorded all the lines and they trans retranslated the dialogue, uh, which is what has stayed throughout. Uh, until the the, the re release that AJ and I have both played, yeah, where that, the voice acting is different, yeah, the lines yeah. are written differently. There, you know, it's it's better, but it's still very cheesy, and I enjoy mm-hmm. it. Actually, that makes me so sad because, like, I feel like you can translate everything differently. You got to keep what is a man a miserable little pile of secrets. Yeah, it's, I, it's, I, just, I it's great. too good. I think I think that rules. Honestly, I, it, I'm it, a little it, sad it, I didn't get to experience like, that. It keeps very much with with Konami's way of doing re-releases right there was the whole thing with like silent hill 2 where everything was just kind of strange there's a there's a dual fate here of like you know replacing quote-unquote bad sub uh, bad dubs or whatever like Mm -hmm. so vampire hunter d the 1985 anime that i absolutely adore Mm -hmm. uh and stuff um apparently if and i haven't looked this up in a while but i believe that castlevania is directly inspired by this sequence in vampire hunter d that occurs yeah and if you watched Vampire Hunter D, you're, you'd go, oh yeah, I, if I was making a Castlevania, this is this is this is somewhere I could have gotten this from. But mm. it also has a like famously melodramatic and bizarre like mm-hmm. some su- like subtitles and music. It's very odd, very cool in that way. Sure. And then yeah, like but they so there was like a Blu-ray or a DVD re-release and they. Mm. Redubbed the whole thing, and it's just uh, like you fucking monsters. Yeah, no, I, I I played the PS1 original in an emulator for this episode, and there's there's something to be said for that. Just yeah, the voice acting is bad, right? Yeah. It's just it's straight up bad voice acting, but there is a certain charm to it because they are giving these these voice actors are really truly giving it their yeah, all, yeah. and the the, the <laughs> it's all they can so, give. <laughs> it's yeah. so yeah. earnest. Yeah, you know, and yeah. that's what comes through, and you just kind of have to love but it. But I will say about the remake, like it's it's the same thing. Like you, it's still very sure. cheesy. It's still very fun. You mm. you will not yeah. have a like ruined, degraded experience of the yeah, game yeah, yeah. by playing the remakes. Oh, it's yeah, still certainly. it still has its own value to you. It has its own I, I, iconography, and also nothing else was retranslated. So all the menu shit right. is still extremely confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Some of the worst menus in games. <laughs> and we'll get game. there in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but sure <laughs> once Richter Belmont defeats Dracula uh, in the marketplace of ideas. <laughs> and, he, you're, and the Polaroid of it dissolves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this uh, photograph. We get this. It's big like they're, doing, call. they're doing mode seven, but with actual polygons. But on the time. PlayStation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so we get this nice title crawl letting us know that, you know, Dracula is defeated or yep. whatever. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he's not gone forever because that's the thing about Dracula's castle. It just kind of reappears every so often. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing mm-hmm. about Dracula's castle. It's supposed to reappear every hundred years like Brigadoon. Another mm-hmm. another mediocre musical shot on uh, Ansco Chrome, like Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. And uh, sorry, Ansco Color. Not Ansco Chrome, whatever. I'm gonna get all all the Ansco heads are gonna yell at me after this. Oh, but God, um, here comes Ansco Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> they are roasting they were Nazi your ass on Twitter right Go now. fuck yourself. Yeah, you can actually you <laughs> can always hear them coming because they always go Brigadoon, but it's always like <laughs> ten miles away. Wait, so Brigadoon? The I don't know what Brigadoon is. Like I I know the I know the name. That's just like it's a it's a place that appears. Yeah, it's a mystical yeah. Scottish city that appears every hundred years, oh, which I think just okay, means sure. like a hundred years is like a day to them. Sort of like the Lord, or, oh, or yeah. Vladimir yeah. Lenin, and uh, I think Narnia. that's what that quote was about. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Scottish so, Narnia. So, uh, but the castle has been reappeared. five years. It's been only yes. five years. It's now yes. 1797. AJ, yes. don't do the Hamilton S- reference, you son of a bitch! I got you. Alucard is our protagonist <laughs> in Symphony of the Night. He is. Running, yeah. he is so he's, cool. He's so fast. He's, oh, he's so fast. Oh, he's so cool. He's got billowing oh, hair. He's so cool. Oh, he's yeah. got that cape. Oh, Last he's got Alar Christian to him. The wind is whistling. You know, he runs and jumps over a bridge. The music starts playing, and it is 
so fucking cool. Yeah, like, it is the, dope as hell still. This is yes. prologue so number two. This is your second fake out because you were first like fully powerful Richter Belmont, mm -hmm. um, just beating Dracula's ass. Now you mm. are fully powerful Alucard. Yes. With all no. kinds of abilities, you're killing things in one hit. You're running oh, yeah. through. Oh, you're whacking these gigantic you're fucking hitting, wolf you're hitting, things. You're hitting big dogs. Yeah. You're not you're even buying dogs. their t-shirts. Dogs that fucking evaporate like flash paper. Yeah. To just, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, really, I really want to be clear because sometimes when we say, oh, it's cool, like we say that facetiously, that I'm not being facetious at all. Like how unbelievably cool you feel yeah. when you yeah. are playing this intro, how quickly it sucks you in. Yeah. It I sucks am, you in. It... <laughs> It makes you feel so powerful, right? Like you are a god in yeah. this world. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and the, it's so smart to do it right after that intro too, where mm -hmm. like they give you a boss thing that you kind of can't lose. Yeah. Because right. Maria comes in because of again all of the plot points we all remember from Rondo's yeah, yeah. blood yes. and stuff, and then they immediately just drop you into fucking Strike Force, like <laughs> you know Alucard, <laughs> just rolling in like sprinting and like just laying absolute waste to everyone. It's and because so cool. you're now at this point, it is. You, are, you feel so fucking hype yeah. mm -hmm. at this point. And now it's, it's, it's like, what, what the fuck is going to happen? Like, am I going to be able to just go and kick some ass? Yeah. And then the game pulls the rug out from under you because you come across Death himself, mm -hmm. yeah. who is like, hey, what are you doing here? Uh, stop. And he immediately takes all of your shit away from you. Your sword, your shield, all of your special power ups, your cool cloak, all of it. Gone. And this just is, like this that. is how you know that like somebody on the team had to have played Super Metroid. It's the uh, like because this is a Metroid moment. Yeah, I, mm. I forget I forget which giant bomber uh, came up with this, but the the uh, term abilities and stuff. It's like a, yeah, this has the abilities uh, yeah. that mm. like Metroid that uh, Metroid also has. Yeah, 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 of the like yeah, we're starting you out like with that and then taking it away again, unless they're all referencing the same other game too, which could be right. Yeah. I, I found out there's a glitch yeah. that you can jump back the screen before yeah. and just keep all your gear for the entire oh, run. I'm like, that kind of misses the point. You know, I get I, I, the feeling of being powerful and wanting to be cool, but like yeah, the, the joy of playing this game is reclaiming your powers and slowly mm -hmm. building up your power over yeah. time, not just being able to lay waste immediately. I mostly know it because I was an, I was a, uh, a hobbyist speed runner of this game for a while. And oh, yeah. that was uh, one of the you know ways of going about this was just like doing that skip. So you don't have to run around and grab, grab other stuff and you can just blaze through shit for quite a yeah. while. Let's just talk a bit about the aesthetics of this game, mm. um, because you get that feeling of excitement and power at the beginning and then it's suddenly stripped away from you. But this is also in conversation with the music. It's like I think that's the first theme of it that I was like, oh, OK, shit, this this soundtrack's going for it. This isn't just like a we're going to have some cool like sort of uh, uh, if you ever watched the Argento movie Phenomenon mm -hmm. Phenomena or whatever, it has a, it has this soundtrack yeah. to it. If you if you go and that, that's my challenge to everyone is go listen to the <laughs> Argento Phenomena. Uh, uh, Stop this podcast go, right now. Go, go, holy shit. I'm not even joking. And you'll go, holy shit, this is just Symphony of the Night. Mm. Somehow, but like once you get to like the marble gallery and it uh and you and it goes into this great grand orchestral kind of march mm -hmm. type of thing, it's it's so dope, and that's when I was like, Oh, okay, cool. This is a soundtrack that's going to just completely just go for and it. It's oh, not yeah. throwing it's, things at the wall. It's here. not even bound to like genre or like styles of instrumentation. No, it's like no. he, here's here's like a here's something that you'd hear on like Delilah. And then and then here's this like goth <laughs> yes, rock shit, that's you know. True. Oh my it's god. Like, yes. Yeah, oh, Pebo Bryson needs to be singing Delilah over this. The track yeah. <laughs> and uh, they call the it a shout symphony. Outs. Of the night. Mm, yeah. uh, mm. Big shout outs here to uh, Michiru Yamane, who is the composer. Yes. Um, just extraordinary work on this. It's almost like she went off and uh, just by herself and no one gave her any notes. And she was just like, here's another great idea. Let's throw it at them. Let's throw it yeah. at them. And everyone was like, yeah, this is this is perfect. Yeah. And I, I think <laughs> one of the reasons why 
she was able to do that and a lot of this team was able to do that was because this was going to be a spin-off Castlevania game so everybody involved was just like mm. we're not like making the thing yeah. the spotlight we're like not, not making like the next big Castlevania game we're just gonna make a game that we really like mm. and yeah. it's almost like mm-hmm. Demon Souls <laughs> yeah a little yeah. bit like, yeah this thing was gonna uh, yeah, lose was... money so fuck it just 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 you know get it out there <laughs> okay I'm yeah, gonna I mean fun. that's like one of like the, the classic kind of tales of, of this game was the we don't know if we're gonna be able to make another one of these yeah. so just go yeah. nuts guys and stuff and so like everyone i know that like um for example like on the save icon you know memory card screen or whatever Mm -hmm. there's all these different little like you know icons and stuff and i think it was i don't know if it was everyone involved made one or something it was like like it was like yeah just make a button that's why there's like tons of them yeah, they change because, seemingly at random and yeah you know, because like so an many people and, yeah. basically they're, they're like yeah just throw them in that's you, so you can, cool you want to make one cool and stuff which is like super dope but that's also how you end up with shit like the tall boots which are the boots that make you <laughs> just one old. pixel taller <laughs> yes. yeah, one pixel it's so well, like yeah. that's worth talking it, about there's a lot of things yeah of course there's the progression unlocks you get there are the more powerful weapons or whatever there's just a lot of shit in here that doesn't do anything right mm-hmm. for any reason it, right? it does not expedite you to the end of the game yeah no you get yeah. boots that make you kind of taller you get yeah. rooms that like you're just supposed to look at and it's just or, or like you have a, a, a very strange yeah. interaction with like the telescope at the bottom of the of the outer mm-hmm. wall tower right and now all those things have been gamified right now all those things have mm-hmm. achievements have a meaning. attached to them oh but, yeah you know yeah. back in the day it was just like oh i found these boots cool I think it's, it's so much more fun i think when it's not gamified because yeah. it's just like mm-hmm. yeah. here's some shit that we threw in you know yeah. It, yeah. to the point of uh another thing that this game really took advantage of with the, the the processing power of the PlayStation. Obviously, you get that Red Book audio with the, the, the full tracks, and you also get these extraordinary uh, pixel art designs, oh, God, which God, are just... meshed in, in some cases, with fully rendered 3D models mm-hmm. and parallax scrolling, which is also yeah, sometimes in 3D. Oh, my God, gorgeous. it looks beautiful. Yeah. It's um, I don't know if you guys have ever covered Vagrant Story, but no, Vagrant Story is... Um, one of those, okay, everyone, Phenomena soundtrack and Vagrant Story. But the um, but <laughs> Vagrant Story was a game that I've been thinking about a lot about recently. It was just on my mind for this reason of like a, I remember looking at Symphony of the Night at the time and going, oh my God, how did they do this? And it's it's stuff that now I'm like, of course I do that and stuff. But like, yeah. there's a bit where you uh, make your way up to, you know, at well, one point later you can see Dracula's weird little like tower keep thing yeah. in the distance and like the clock tower. These are classic Castlevania things. Mm-hmm. But it's just it's just a simply mapped onto like a, a, a rectangle, like a cube, or like some sort of like three D volume and stuff, and it just slowly turns depending on how far through the scene you are. It's mm-hmm. kind of like a quasi dreamy parallax. Yeah. And at the time, it but it, it meshes so well with everything else, and I guess it's like why people go back to doing pixel art a lot mm-hmm. is because sure. it's like it all just, it gives you a medium that where things just like blend really well because yes. it's just like it's mosaic tiles it's mm-hmm. like well i'm working with uh, when it's when the people are doing like the quote unquote like true pixel art where it's like no we're, we're keeping yeah a uh, pixel sizes u- uniform across the whole thing it kind of um automatically gives you this great interlocking kind of feel to it it just feels so sturdy yeah. Yeah. in ways that it's harder to do with one pure 3d or even like a lot of times like hand-drawn art i think that's why like a lot of like uh, this is kind of an undersung thing of like um 2d games that have like a lot of like um hand-drawn stuff in it is that you need to make it look like things were not scaled or drawn by different people or something it all needs to you need to be able to like pause this and go this looks like it's of a piece and somehow castlevania like something of the night this early playstation game where they're throwing so much weird shit at the at the at the wall and everything it somehow clicks together it's more weirdly miraculous even with all of its early playstation like tricks and stuff that it, it pulls yeah yeah and there's and there's a lot of like stuff when you're running uh through like rooms in the background that you're like ooh, i wonder how i get to that giant floating eyeball that's just outside yeah. the room mm-hmm. you can't 
It's just there. Yeah. You'll <laughs> never know what that eye is or yeah. how to get there. Yeah. It's just hanging out because Dracula brought some friends. You know, he hangs out. Dracula <laughs> loves to blow your mind. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And he's got some bros. You know, he's he, a lot yeah. of weird shit lives in this castle and you have to murder it. it, it that's the thing about a castle yeah. that's been around for millennia. You're going to recruit some weird guys after yeah. a while. Yeah. Just, You're going to get some hop ons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the thing about castles. They're famously pregnable. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's always guys getting in that's why they're <laughs> castles well i don't know is this is this I, I think you had mentioned scott like do you think that dracula is inviting these guys in like right, are they buds yeah. like what's the what's the deal there I, I think that after a while you do kind of start to wonder because you run into so many people and creatures in this that you're like some of this just feels like oh yes yeah, so they're like a I don't know, like a monster spawned of some sort of evil, but it's like, mm-hmm. but no, it's like this guy has got a bed and a whole setup here. Like, <laughs> Dracula's probably got to know Dracula or whoever his grounds is, like manor keeper is, or his valet or his butler or whoever the hell. They, they got to know that, like, or, there's a whole area that's just called like Orlox's chambers. Yeah. So it's like clearly Dracula's like that's just where Orlox stays. He's he's renting. Yeah. I'm sub I'm subletting it out to Gallimoth or yeah. Behemoth or I, I, I want to say about about Orlocks for a second. I think I think he's even called Orlocks or something. He's yeah. supposed to be Count Orlock, who is the vampire from F. W. Murnau's silent masterpiece Nosferatu. Yeah, oh. Shrek is in this game yeah. essentially. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. It is kind of fun how this game takes like different cues from different pieces of literature and film and stuff like that and just incorporates into this world that yeah is kind of silly but never mm-hmm. feels incoherent yeah that's it, it's, wild. It, like it's it's a testament to the strength of the world design in tandem with the incredible technological achievements of everything to do with the art and the music and, and, and all of that and it would be one thing if this was just like a pretty game that was kind of okay but no it feels so good to play oh god so good it certainly does yeah let's talk a little bit about alucard's mechanical toolkit right yeah. like what his movement set looks like yeah how he operates as well as how his character sort of progresses over the course of the game well, some of it is classic Castlevania, right? Like mm-hmm. you have your attack button. Now you don't have a whip. It's usually swords. Most of what you're dealing with mm-hmm. is swords. Yeah. But sometimes you have uh, gloves or knives that have a shorter reach. Rods. Yeah. Notably. The shield rod. Uh, uh, no, notably one rod. But yes. We'll get to <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah morning stars. Things like that. You have the ability to jump. Eventually there will be updates to that jumping mechanic. You have the back dash. You have potentially shields. You always have you you can have two weapons equipped or you can have one of your buttons square or circle for items or whatever. And uh, you you can uh, you can turn into animals. You sure can. (laughs) Yeah, there's there are dedicated buttons for that. One of them is useful. You have a wolf button, a bat button, and then you have two buttons for mist. It is a the weirdest dog ever yeah. in a video game very he's strange dog cute. i like he, him he, i like him a lot he's just like that is just not how you draw a dog no. <laughs> okay yeah. i like that he has the harness of a service dog yeah like he's, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing too, which I love. he's dracula he's seeing eye dog yeah he, he's also he's got like a little like he's got your little sword and stuff so does the uh the oh, yeah bat. yeah you have the mm-hmm. sword hanging off of him it's so good yeah and there's there's uh, there's cool interactions because you can also summon familiars that's another one of alucard's yes. uh mm-hmm. signature moves and you can uh unlock a bat familiar so when you turn into a bat you and your bat familiar can be friends there's a little heart yes. he's got a little heart that appears yeah. and when you turn back into a human your bat friend gets really confused he's like, where's my friend yeah. where'd my friend go it's very sweet um, um you can also press up in the attack button to use sort of special attacks and then there's like uh fucking mortal combat button combos for yeah. spells to learn magic spells that i just can't do i can't do they them. are really I, I have found them to be really inconsistent again as someone who tried speed running this for a long that time that makes me feel that's better that's the one thing that's like one thing that kind of stopped me is i could never pull them off with Mm. like predictability i'd just be sitting there trying to like do that like i mean so there's like there's a few different things like like the the wolf has a sprint that ends up being really really useful Mm -hmm. at times Mm -hmm. and then the bat dash is like the thing that basically you need to like it's incredibly important for for most speed runs to have the bat dash and stuff because you can just fly you can get uh um basically invincibility you can just like 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 you know bolt through hallways and just fly through everyone 
uh, in, in your way and stuff. And, but you have to be able to just do your little, you know, quarter turn, whatever. Yeah. And so if you have a hard time doing that, you're kind of fucked. I didn't know <laughs> about the bat that. dash. So I just yeah. flew over all my enemies very, very slowly. <laughs> well, and the wolf dash is a lot of fun yeah. to do once you get the power up because yeah. you have the ability, like, especially when you level higher, because that's the thing. There's a leveling system in this game, too. Yeah. It has everything. Yeah. Even <laughs> your familiars have their own levels. That's yeah. right. It, and the higher they level, like, if you can get your familiars up to, like, level 70, they can do some insane shit. The, the, the sword guy is kind of the classic when it comes to that, because, like, it, it starts off as a little sword, and it just occasionally will lazily go and, like, swipe something and then kind of hang out for a bit, and then it Occasionally, just go over and something else. If you let it, uh, if you, if you do the thing of uh, let it, uh, leaving your game on overnight while you stand somewhere uh, securely in a room that keeps spawning enemies and just let the sword take them out, you'll wake up to this like twenty foot long mega sword that is just flying around the screen constantly and talking at you. Yeah, yeah, the so, familiars yeah. talk. I was not anticipating the familiars yeah, talking. So good, the little... utterly unnecessary for like totally. a core, yeah. the core yeah. Castlevania loop or anything. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's, it's dope as hell. Your little yeah. demon guy can be like, oh, that looks like a button. I'm going to go yeah. press it. And he flies up and he yeah. pushes like, oh, I pressed it. Ha ha ha. And then you walk through this <laughs> secret room into a door. Like this game, not since like Dark Souls or any like the FromSoft games, have I discovered a game that constantly surprised me as much as Symphony yeah. mm -hmm. of the Night. Like yeah. just and, when you and, think you figured everything out, there's a hidden elevator that you just yeah. stand in one place for 20 seconds and it takes you to the one of the strongest items in the game. It's, <laughs> oh, it's so magical. So good. I the other thing, too, is that, you know, we, we've we've talked a bit about all of these different mechanics. And if it sounds like a grab bag, it is. But if it sounds overwhelming, surprisingly, it's not. No. Mm -hmm. And the reason that it's not overwhelming is that you gain access to all of these things over time. Yes. Yeah. Again, when you start out, it, 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 unless you run away from death, you will start the game after that encounter with literally nothing. Yep. And so whether we're talking about the weapons, the, uh, the, the, the powers, the familiars, all of that, you are discovering these things over the course of the game in different locations. And the levels are set up in such a way that there are certain things that you can only do with certain things that you get. So yes. like, for example, you can turn into mist. You can take the form of mist. And it, it, you might be wondering, well, what, what can mist do for me? Well, not well, as much as Riven. Yeah. <laughs> what can mist do for you? Every once in a while, as you're exploring the castle, you'll come to like an open gate kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you will see a prompt uh, that says mist could pass. And so you're, you're wondering like, oh, well, what does that mean? Mist could pass. And, and when you get to the actual thing that gives you the power of mist, it's like, oh, I need to go back there and try that thing out yeah. and see what happens. Yeah, just be sure to mark where it, that was because that, well, yeah. <laughs> the castle yeah. is very big. Um, but there's moments like this throughout the game constantly where yeah. you will see a thing that you cannot contextually yeah. interact with, but you'll put it in the back of your head and you'll be like, I think I could do something here i just don't have the ability to do if, it yet. if i could jump just a little bit higher i was gonna say so like super metroid did that by just having different doors and different blocks that had like really specific um looks so you're like oh it's a pink door okay well i need a super missile to get through or like yeah, an right. orange door i need like a bomb uh super bomb kind of thing yeah. uh or like this is a little block that has like helpfully has the icon of the thing i need to shoot yeah. it with <laughs> yeah. uh, on it and stuff this this game does it by just being like bars okay i will only ever see these kinds of bars if i need to pass this or it's like i only need to kind of do that it has fewer of the little kind of like nooks and crannies in a way that like metroid does because metroid has like the little ball obviously yeah. and so mm -hmm. sure. you come up to spots where you'll see it and go ball that's it Whereas like right. um, more, even more than Metroid, um, this game has a lot of just destructible walls and stuff. Yeah. Just a yeah. lot of like tap this part. Like there's just tons and tons and tons of them in part because this is a game that will give you like a sword that really is not that much better than the other sword, but is just called like the Gladius and it has, it's called this and it has a slightly different animation and it's hidden in, in, uh, in a room that you can only get to if you bat bat dash straight up into this one random room <laughs> you walk in and get it and that's it there's nothing to it you may you'll probably never even use it because it's not all that good mm -mm. there's nothing to it but it's just there yeah yeah in case you want to go yeah, find there's it. a lot of weapons yeah. you will get a hold of that 
you're you're already going to be stronger than that all yeah. when, by the time that you find it yeah and I, I like I, but I like I don't know it's 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 so endearing that sort of lack of, mm-hmm. of really explicit polish where it's like well they're gonna get to it at this time we need it to have incrementally more power or some sort of elemental thing or whatever sometimes it's just like ah here's no it's just another thing that I found but there's a reward to that too yeah How, yeah at least unless unless you're you really get into it it feels remarkably pretty tight yeah until yeah. you get the chrysogram and then it breaks the entire fucking game I don't think I actually have ever used the chrysogram I'm uh, I just have always used the the, the shield rod yeah okay. shield rod oh, yeah. also breaks the game that, the, yeah, <laughs> that breaks the game that is probably the most game breaking thing to have ever just been included in in a game and it's hard to do like you do kind of have to like know how to do it yeah and what you're doing and stuff with the but right once shield. you get that yeah like the right shield and everything it is just a powered up hold in front of you it does like 999 damage per frame i think oh, you, wait, 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 <laughs> yeah. you can it's you can button. hold it yeah you can hold it i didn't realize you and this you just walk through the room and just oh, go that's awesome dead, dead, dead. oh Any that's boss, so like, fucking funny i never knew this dracula you'll take out final dracula and like Four seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I, I yeah. take it that the, uh, the 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 shield rod is the preferred weapon for speedrunners. Yeah, okay. uh, for sure. I mean, there are like as far as I know, I mean, uh, all the ones I've seen end up using it, uh, but it can be kind of like a pain to get. I think like there's some folks who eschew it to like, you know, use things that are like a little like easier because there's also secondary weapons and items. Like I think the shuriken, if I remember correctly, is mm-hmm. like unbelievably overpowered and stuff. So if you can do oh. like an uh, like an item dupe. There's a bunch of things with just secondary weapons yeah. that you can just like throw and just be like, oh, yeah, I'm just basically invincible. I'm just tossing like infinite shurikens <laughs> into Dracula. You know, that other classic vampire uh, weapon yeah. whips and shurikens. <laughs> but, the, uh, <laughs> um, but the shield rod is the the to really uh, quickly explain what the shield rod is. Yeah. It's a rod you get if you hit it and there, there's, a, there's a shield button. There's a guard button, right? So if you yeah. can equip a shield, mm-hmm. hold that up. But if you use the shield rod, it's kind of just not a great weapon by itself. It's just like fine. Yeah. But if you hit your attack and your shield button at the same time, he'll kind of do something where it'll activate some sort of power that's mm. that's inherent to the shield. And so huh. sometimes it'll be just like, you know, defense plus two or like something like defense against this or whatever. Offense and it'll give up. you like a little animation. Like yeah. if you use it on the leather shield, you just get like, a, like, a, like looks like a spectral cow kind of appears <laughs> yeah, and again goes away. And like, there's a bunch of other things, but if you use it with, I believe the Alucard shield, I think yeah. um, it basically all the shields in the game come up and like surround you and stuff. And then uh, <laughs> you, if you hold it out, it uses MP um, okay. and stuff, but you can also be recharging your MP as you go. Yep. So like the, uh, the uh, and you just hold it in front of you and yeah, it does, I think 999 per frame. So the game doesn't explain this either, right? Like no. I had the shield rod, I used it for a while because <laughs> it was a stronger weapon that I had for a bit. And I, I saw that it, it like either like it adds to your defense or or if you have a shield equipped, it adds to the the attack power. Yeah. And some people along the way thought, well, it's a shield rod. Let me hit the shield and the rod at the same time Ooh. and figured that out and then yeah. found out that it's just a win button. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you, if you have that one shield, it's a it's a essentially like a, a win button uh, for the most part. Yeah. Like I, I had a friend who just played it at the time and just. He actually just found out in, in like so 1997 cool. and told me uh, yeah. and stuff. And he, he he's like, he's like, yeah, you should try this. He didn't know the extent of it. He's like, <laughs> yeah, if you do this, it just like, you know, it just turns into this really powerful thing. And then yeah. lo and behold, I think a bunch of people found that. And then we're like, oh, holy shit. This just this is this is literally the win button. But it takes some doing to get all of those. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, right. Yeah, yeah. That's not available right off the bat. You yeah, have to go pretty deep down. Alicard to all that Shield, stuff. you're not going to get it back until pretty late in the yeah. game there's a there's a on the on the subject of like fun items and weird things that are unnecessary you get pretty far along in the main castle and you will find a bunch of stuff that's listed as alucart's shield and alucart's yes. sword yeah. and alucart and it's like oh the translation got weird here uh but they're all weak and they suck and you'll never right. use them turns out that the real ones are still around and it's just like this very straight, like, who came up with that? I'm so glad they did. We, ta- we talked about this uh, a couple times before. There are a couple games that sort of fit into this mold for me, Dark Souls being one of them. But it yeah. seems mm-hmm. like an ideal 
playground game where you and your friends yeah. would all play this game, come back the next day on the playground and be like, so I just discovered that there's a shield that can summon all the other shields and it destroys mm-hmm. everything. And it's like, yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, I found a secret room where I fought my mom, but she was like sexy and like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like discovering yeah. missing no in Pokemon. Yeah, this yeah. is a, a yeah. game where someone's going to tell you something mm-hmm. and it's actually not bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> right. It, but except that unlike missing no, this is part of the game yeah, it's all as built in. Design. Yeah. yeah. Like, they did this on purpose. Calling it, yeah, that's an interesting like phrase, just playground game. Because mm-hmm. like um, I, I wouldn't have called it that, but I think that's actually completely that's the perfect term for it. Is like mm-hmm. I think that is one of the highest things. If a game can 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 successfully do that and stuff, I think that is like one of the top tier things any game can aspire to, no matter what kind of game it is. Sure. Like yeah. a, 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 if it's a game that requires because I do think that like video games. There's a whole lot of like annoying discourse that game designers get into occasionally and mm. game fans and game writers just like shut the fuck up about this is <laughs> stupid about like the, well what do games do or something yeah. where it's like a well I played this game and it had like a lot of like story in it but that's just not really what games do what games do best is blah, blah blah and you'll get like a lot of game designers who will be like well games are essentially like empathy machines more than other media they oh, inspire God. empathy and stuff and it's like shut the fuck yeah stop, we're, stop we're theater yeah, people we've heard this fucking shit at so many yeah. times oh yeah, yeah. It's so dumb however there is one thing that games do and this can be a live action thing or this can be a video game or something is that they do exploration really really well yeah in that sense and video games do exploration really well by creating these spaces yeah and creating um these uh like one of the things that i love about this game like i I do think exploration is like one of the highest things that you can do like in games as far as because like you know a lot of dialogue trees like that's exploration and yeah, 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 yeah. Like, i want to open nodes to get my abilities yeah there is that sort of like i just want to see number go up but also yeah. it's like a but because i want to see what's next that sort of thing yeah. and uh i think metroidvania games like they they make exploration such a core core like here it is in tiny chunks Yes. And you have this sort of thing. And I think like that's why something like, you know, and we could get to this later, but like the, the that lineage that I think does go down to something like Dark Souls and Demon Souls and it scratches that same itch yeah. of like a, oh, my God, what all is going on here and stuff like yeah. this game does something which I don't think we've hit yet, where you will run into other NPCs and stuff and other characters that you show up and have the dumbest conversations ever written. <laughs> but you are like, oh God, this whole time you've been running around too. And I'm just right, yeah. bumping into you. You're just, we're just like passing in the night kind of thing or whatever. And Dark Souls and Demon Souls do the same thing. Of the, yeah. I was just wandering by and oh God, Steve's here. Hi, Steve. Yeah. And he's just like, oh yeah, man. Anyway, I was just over in blah, blah, blah. I saw a big demon. And you're like, huh? That's weird. I haven't seen that guy. Oh no, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of, uh, kind of deal. And this game, this game kind of does that too. And it it hints at this much bigger, weirder world where I'm like, I don't know what is going to happen or what is around this corner. Yeah. And it seems like it, like I'm you know I'm looking through the telescope. I'm seeing a guy in a boat. There's a guy in a boat. There's someone. Someone has a routine. <laughs> this is just a, this is a normal Tuesday for some guy who lives here. Yeah. Like, just, it, it gives it's, all of this this life yeah. to it. Yeah. There's like a ferryman, you know, like, like yeah. 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 Charon's in the basement. All of the things about this this world that are both to do with the setting and the mechanical richness of the gameplay Mm. are enough to make you be willing to overlook the really annoying stuff, which is also to be clear, very much apparent here. Some of it's to do with getting hit by Gorgons of the game. Do you have trouble with the Gorgons and the Medusas? Well, no, because I I got the shield. (laughs) I got the shield that makes it so that you can't get stoned. Uh, The the armor, you mean? The armor of Christ. Yeah, Uh, yeah, that's right. The armor, the armor of Christ. I put, I I downed the armor. I downed the breastplate of righteousness and I can Mm -hmm. no longer get stoned because if you're a good Christian, you don't do drugs. Of course. Um, course. There's some other stuff too, right? Like, I mean, the the menuing system is a goddamn disaster. (laughs) Like, yeah, he, terrible. You get terrible. you get a, a lot of healing items over the course of the game, and you never want to use them. No, because uh, <laughs> what you have to do to use a healing item, which by the way, uh, fun so choice that like some of the healing items are just random food items. Jeez! In order to consume a consumable, you need to go into the menu, which you do by pressing the start button. Yep. You go to the equip screen. You take whatever you you pick one of your hands, and you 
swap out whatever you're holding in the hand yeah. with that food item. You equip you unpause the, food. the game, then you press the button for that hand, you will throw the consumable <laughs> out onto the ground, and you need to walk over onto <laughs> it in order to eat it. And so then you'll good. get like also, 20 health. Also, <laughs> yeah. I'm not done yet. Also... <laughs> There is something that the game has called meal tickets. And in order to use a meal ticket, you need to put the meal ticket consumable in your hand. Push the button. The meal ticket will then put a food item in your inventory. So what you need to do is go back into the inventory, swap out the meal ticket with the food item. And again, unpause, push the button, walk over, pick up the food item. Well, you see, I just take all my meal tickets, go to a room off to the side and use them all at once. But I'm built different. Well done. Yeah. That's very wise yeah. of you. There's, um, there's also um, you can get peanuts in the game, and you, you can get, get unlimited one peanuts. HP. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but what ha- but ha- what happens is you in order to eat it, you have to throw it into the air and then hit the up button so you catch the peanut in your mouth. <laughs> Otherwise, That's you cannot so eat the peanut. Just the action yeah. of going through this menu and selecting the food is its own like ordeal because Mm -hmm. you can't sell most of your items nor can you throw them out so every single weapon even the useless ones every single food item it just fills these two columns of a menu that will go on forever yeah it's the worst (laughs) there is no classification lose your good sword for a couple hours absolutely (laughs) because there's no classification of items in this menu everything is in one place and by the end of this game you will accumulate dozens and and dozens and dozens of items. And what's worse is once you use one of the food items, that creates an empty slot in like the middle of your yes. list. Yeah. When you get something yeah. new, that thing goes into the middle of your list, so you will never it's, find it's it. It's so good. Yeah, we just did not know about menuing, apparently, no. in 1995 or mm. 1996 when this thing was being developed, but it said not at all. Yeah, that menuing, and like when, you, when you're speedrunning, a lot of it is just menuing. A lot of it's mm-hmm. right. menuing. That makes sense. It's like, like uh, Link's Awakening is like that too for speed runs. Yeah, mm. it's such a it's just such an ordeal to try to do it, and uh, yeah, it's it is it is the worst part of this game is the is the menuing. If you're trying to play it like that, I feel like later on, like if you played it more than once, you you have your okay. This is what's actually useful. This is what isn't useful. Yeah. Yes. So you can kind of ignore everything, but and so you we generally only have to like menu through and find each thing like once or twice and yeah. you're like yeah i'm just right. sticking with this the rest of the game i might have to swap out like one or two but like there's a lot of times also where like i don't i rarely ever used healing right items but you, you kind of just don't stuff. need to honestly you can yeah. level up well, and get defense it's, it's and... not the hardest game on earth either. No. it depends no. on mm. your facility with finding save points yeah that's another right. thing yep. that i wanted to bring up that throughout the castle just look up the maps on the internet it's fine folks just, just look it up I when w- you're finding the well, save I'm, point. I'm 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 hardcore so i didn't yeah. look up except for two times Ooh, um, skibbity skibba danger i am the rearranger <laughs> the, you will find throughout the castle these rooms where there are these spinning yellow and red what are they, dodecahedrons, yeah. I think? It's a D&D die, yeah. So, and, 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 and what you can do is you can step into this thing, and mm-hmm. it will heal all of your health, yeah. it will recharge all of your magic, which is the thing that allows you to do stuff like, you know, turn into a wolf. Yeah, you can save your game. With an incredibly dope visual effect. It's cool. Yeah. It turns it into a, so a, dope. Yeah. a coffin forms around you, and then, and then spins, deconstructs. And then- and so then it, cool. it lands with like the the cross of the coffin facing you with this. Yeah, kind it's like of no, it's it's so dope. they legitimately yeah. like so they were like dope. they decided not to do anything in 3D unless they knew it was going to look good. Yes. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, which a lot of other Respect. PlayStation developers of the era could have taken notes from them. Yeah. If you don't find the save points, you can it, there. There is no other way to save the game. And, right? and there's and no this, other this, checkpoint if you die. There's no like spot that you'll respawn except for the save point. Yeah. This is by design because, mm-hmm. you know, there are parts of the castle that are pretty tough. And as you are exploring the new parts of the castle, you, you, you have this feeling of like, Oh, there's sort of a risk reward thing where it's like, right. oh, should I keep going or yeah. should I go back to the save point? Also, mm-hmm. the enemies respawn every time you enter a room. So right. you will always know what is behind you, but you won't necessarily know what is in front of you. Mm-hmm. And what it creates is this very exciting, although occasionally frustrating sense of exploration and adventure. The first run I did of it, I had an incredibly difficult time. 
I, oh, man. I, yeah. <laughs> I smashed headlong into the wall because I wasn't playing the game the way the game needs to be played, which is yes. with mm-hmm. patience because yes. I was very nervous that I wasn't going to be able to beat it in time to actually uh, talk on this podcast. And then I found oh, out, okay. oh yeah, well, I mean, it's only like eight or nine hours long. Yeah, like, I remember you, you, you messaged struggling. me and you were like, you saw people were saying it took like 10 or 12 15 12 hours or yeah. 15 hours to beat and you were like uh, I don't know if I can make it under that time yeah, yeah because mm-hmm. I was I was really struggling because and I you're was, good at games yeah, I'm well, not good at games and I was like I beat this in 12 I think you're gonna find it mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah but it it's one of those things that like what really hit me hardest was the doppelganger fight. That's where I mm. had to actually take mm-hmm. a break from the night and walk away from it because that is the fight where it's like you cannot proceed any further in this castle unless you fundamentally understand how the combat works. And yes. as, right. up until that point, I had just been spamming stuff. I, I I had the throwing knives and I would just throw it uh, uh-huh. uh, demons from a distance yeah. in order to survive. And this one required you to actually get get in there and figure out the mechanics and I couldn't mm. because I, I, I right. had not adapted to the play style yet and it took until my second playthrough that I actually was able to to conquer it but it was it was rough it was a very rough first go that's the other mechanical beat that we sort of alluded to but should also probably make explicit is that along with all of your weapons that you have and you know can whack guys with you also have a secondary weapon mm-hmm. that has a charge associated with it yeah. basically yeah. and Something that makes Castlevania yeah. very different from other games is that you don't have health pickups that recharge your health in the world. Right. You can use a consumable, you can recharge at a save station, but the only thing that is that, that that you will collect as you are walking, you know, through the castle that will immediately add to your counter in real time is hearts. Yeah. And hearts don't hearts give you health. health. <laughs> what they give you is charge for your secondary weapon. Yeah, yeah. Naturally. And, yeah. and that, yeah. goes you back, not, that goes back to original Castlevania. This right. is one of the basic tenets. Uh, one heart equals one dagger. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. It's very weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The main reason that I struggled with it was because I hadn't played a Castlevania game before this. And a, this game feels like a huge inflection point in that it's still it's trying to do all these new things but is also very much mired in sort of the old Castlevania design which is hit a thing wait for the thing to counterattack, dodge and then you attack again like that's sort of the mm-hmm. main cycle of combat whereas I'm I was more used to the more recent Castlevanias which is more just like attack attack very aggressively and you're able mm-hmm. to actually kind of dodge out of the way and I they do add the dodge mechanic in here but I could never get a like a full handle on it like my, mm-hmm. my timing just didn't like mesh up with Castlevania but I was just like I ha- I am determined to figure out why this game rules I've got yeah. I'm gonna power on through I'm gonna give it a second playthrough and the second playthrough it clicked for me I finally yeah. got it it was it was mm-hmm. sort of the Dark Souls thing right you, I beat my head against it long enough it's much easier the Dark Souls I will say like the wall mm-hmm. came down much much easier but for anyone out there who might be struggling with the difficulty especially at the beginning of Symphony of the Night just know that it is surmountable like right. very much by the end of the game you're a god right like and, nothing um, can it touch really, you it's a game that's similar to dark souls and demon souls like it wants you to go no no play along with me just go with me on yeah this and stuff like you were talking about like the yeah i was treating it sort of like as a challenge thing i have to get through it and it's like no this is a game that wants you to poke around like yes it's get like the there are infinite number of secrets in it and they would not have put that in there because again like i think sometimes people see that and like well how was i supposed to know and it's like because the game wants you to stop and look right. or accidentally yeah. hit it yes. or something yes, yes, yes. or whatever and just just roll with it. It, it is extremely playful. It's a very generous game yes. in that way. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes it will just throw out things to delight you, like the one HP peanut that you have to catch in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you the, know? the one pixel boot. Like the fact that you can sit on any chair. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Basically. So we've now talked a lot about the core mechanics of this game, how it feels, what makes it so fun to play. But mm. of course, Course, mechanics are nothing outside of an interesting environment with interesting level design. And so in the second half of this episode, we're going to be talking a lot about what makes the world of Castlevania so fun and exciting to explore. So stay tuned for that. This week's episode is brought to you by a box full of bats. Well, that can't be right. Let me just open the box here and... Ah! 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 Ah!
a box full of bats. Why say gua no when you could say gua yes? So, Scott, a few days ago, and I don't know if you saw this, um, I posted on our Patreon uh, an excerpt of a Lost Adventures in Odyssey episode. Oh, Jesus. Did you, did yeah, you see he this? he finally put it up, AJ. He put up- Was this the one that had the rap in it? Yes, yeah. the Adventures in Odyssey I, I rap. Have not listened to the, I have not listened to it yet because okay. I just legitimately was like in uh, some weird uh, meds related issues this week. Yes. And so my brain was in yes, a weird yes. spot and I was like, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to go here. You don't want to, you, right you don't want to cure yourself. You mean, you don't want to listen yeah, to Odyssey true, yeah. and have all, all I would not crawl away. up to the pool of whatever, which is the Odyssey <laughs> rap. To, um, uh, yeah. Anyway, I've just, I've just been, it, I, I just, I came across it again recently and I was like, I just need to post this because it's on our live show playlist. So, it is on the yeah. live show playlist yeah. and it's a rap about just the importance of communication. You got to open up your heart and communicate. Oh, and so it's like a Parappa the Rappers type song where it's it, just like, it's, it's a lot like I, I got to believe. believe. It does flow yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but much worse. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I've just been thinking about communication, the importance of communication. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know where it's going. <laughs> I, well, I think that's poor communication, Josh. Sorry. I was, well, was going to say, I, I could loop us in with that. Because, like, well, because like, I think originally I was thinking about this in relationship to like wit's end and how that's like, mm, yes, yes, like, it's, yes. Like, there's, like what we, you never know, like what all is in there. Right. What the actual layout is yes. and stuff. It's mm. like, it's like, a, Oh, I like, I went through here and like, I went through a wall in the <laughs> attic and found, <laughs> and found another 10 buildings in a row I, I, or something. I, or it's like, I'm in like sub basement five. And yeah, also you, there's a skeleton down here. Yeah, Absolutely. You pull, you pull something out. It makes this, you make, makes us makes noise. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing that if you beat the walls of Wits End hard enough, a whole chicken falls out. Essentially, yeah. I had made a bunch of like, I was, I had taken, so like, uh, like a month ago, right? I was, uh, I was stressed. There's a lot going on. So, you know, I have some like, you know, weed capsules uh, mm. that are just like, okay, I just need to like chill out for the evening. And um, so I took one and it was like, I've like used like a 10 milligram one and it's just like yeah take that and if later on you're like not feeling it you can take another one i fucked up though and oh, accidentally no. took a hundred milligram oh, one which i had never had that's a lot of thc anything like that Mm-mm. ever Mm-mm. in my life yeah. and stuff and so i was bad <laughs> high for like a while but then the next day like could barely move but was very relaxed during that <laughs> period somewhere in there I made this low effort Castlevania, like Symphony of the Night Adventures and Odyssey mashup, like screenshots or whatever. Where it's yes. just the intro conversation. That's what that came mixed. from. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, that was that yeah. was why I sent you the message too. I w- I remember I saw that and I was like, you do you want to come on our show to talk about Castlevania? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, and that was kind of it because I was just like, I was like, oh, this is funny because I think it was yeah, it was around the time when I was like listening through uh, some of your back catalog right. and I, I was just reflecting on how weird and ominous like like what is this sort of mad spider god of this right, uh, yes. of this whole web and like his sort of interdimensional shape because like, like they blow up wit's end but then it comes back at some point right, i forget yeah. how uh, and, spoilers, uh, spoilers. Scott. <laughs> oh i'm Jesus. sorry um, but uh, I, except I, the, I except that the the, the 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 second wit's end is upside down that's yeah, the, that's yeah, the yeah, thing yeah, yeah. well that's the, the thing like, eventually end. yeah but like i was thinking about like Cause there's so much like overlap. There's like the imagination station is like that coffin you sleep in and then go like, see like yeah, your mom yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. And there was, there was all this, re- there's like the Bible room for sure. And mm-hmm. stuff. There's uh Oh, the Bible room is straight out of Castlevania. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, like, a, like a fucking black mirror that you talk to say a Bible verse and then it becomes like an actual <laughs> mirror and then stabs yeah. you with a knife. Yeah. That's Castlevania right there. Oh, yeah. 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 You, would, yeah. you would just press up in front of something like that and it would, you know, the thing about symphony of the night, the thing that for me personally sticks with me the most about this game, more than the mechanics, more than the characters is these levels these areas Mm. they are so richly realized and i wanted to spend a good chunk of our time today just talking about the world design and what makes it so memorable uh i think that like the the chapel area has always been really fascinating to me but one because of just lore wise of like 
So why does Dracula have a big like Catholic looking cathedral? Yeah, right. In his in his thing, like uh, you know, typically as per the lore, that's not something Dracula would want to be near. So that's what makes me also wonder. Yeah. Uh, you know, is he keeping this around for his guests who are observant mm. or something? <laughs> he's very something, like, curious. You're, you're he's the, very he's documentical. Yeah. 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 It's like at the airport where they have like the multi faith lounge or something yeah. like that, except yeah. for like it's just Catholics <laughs> or something. Um, I've talked about this before, but the the confession booth uh, room is. One of my favorite rooms in any game ever. Yeah. It's, oh. It is. It is essentially. And I've talked about this elsewhere, so people have heard me talk about this. Take a drink, but like the <laughs> um, this game had a lot of like light bulb moments for a lot of people who would then go on to make games, or at least like think about games in a design manner a lot and think like, why sure. does this work, or why like what's interesting that this is doing. I think this is like where you there's like it's like a really accessible way of like uh, where I think a lot of people just start thinking about like game design and like what what people what you're trying to get across and like why is this here is mm-hmm. the kind of the thing it's like why and like i don't know the actual story behind this uh room at all if i ever met like you guy would be like hi i want to ask you just about this one spot and all it is is there's you're in this uh this cathedral it's the upper left hand corner of the first uh, castle and uh there's this really really long staircase that you go up it's kind of annoying and uh, yeah, it's, stuff. it's, and it's designed awesome... to just like really piss you off the first it's time. So it's so trolling. Like, yeah. It's just the whole. It's just knock back the room. Yeah. But off to the side, there's just this one room. It's a screen-sized room. It's nothing big. Different music that sounds just way less like adventuresome or like epic or spooky or whatever, like funky if you're in the Coliseum. And it's just a confessional booth. Mm-hmm. And yep. depending on which side you go into, either like a priest will come up and kind of like sit and like talk to you and kind of like 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 as if you're kind of doing confession or um, or it'll like draw the curtain and like stab you each time you enter the room it, it sort of flips a coin and it's one or, or the other priest yeah mm. yeah and then if you but if you sit on the priest side you'll get a ghost of a woman who will come up and just start crying yeah and like you know talking to you and you can just sit there it's so eerie it. It's the only, there's nothing to get in that scene. It triggers nothing as far yeah. as I can tell. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't unlock anything. It's just, you walked into this random room, people, the ghosts and whatever going on in this place. This is just, they go here to do yeah. confession. Maybe like, are these ghosts that are just damned to do this forever? Are you just bumping into a ghost of whatever? And like these like villagers doesn't show up. Doesn't look like a skeleton. It just looks like a lady, yeah. like a normal, kind of person but you know a ghost and it is i just remember sitting there when i was like a teenager playing this i was like 14 or 15 and just being like d- absolutely dumbfounded at this thing like yeah, yeah. Not, like not in the sense of like no this is wrong or whatever but just in a this is affecting me on some weird level and i and i couldn't for a long time figure out what it was i was like oh that's just kind of cool and random and like I think this is one of those things that, like, again, like among among just like a certain group of kind of game designers, this is one of those things you're like, oh, Castlevania, the confessional room, and they all go, yes, mm, yes, yeah. the thing. And yeah. It's just like one of these like undersung, like whenever people talk about this game, you know, they talk about a lot of stuff that we've talked about, which is like the much, I think, more core, interesting things about it. But it has these moments like this that are by themselves quietly extremely influential and interesting because mm-hmm. it's just why is this here no reason other than just the art of it basically yeah. Yeah. other than the vibes it's like a maybe there was something planned there that just never got put in maybe it was supposed to hook up into something else yeah. i don't know but the way it ended up is this is just a place to go and experience this tiny little story and that's it and it was just like and you could easily miss it and it's like if you want to boil down, I think for wh- wh- why this game is so foundational for a lot of people, it is that sort of like a this meant a lot because I could miss it, mm-hmm. yeah, and because it all, it was only there for me to experience it and see it, and that's it. I didn't get an item from it, I didn't get an upgrade. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. I maybe lost some health. That was yeah. it. <laughs> I got stabbed <laughs> by it. a priest. <laughs> but... I got stabbed by a priest. But perhaps all the same could be said of all religions, etc. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's, I mean, there's something very interesting to me about that room because what I think it does is reveals a very subtle characteristic of Dracula himself because mm-hmm. the 
castle is made in Dracula's image, right? Like the way I, yeah. I justified the hodgepodgeness of it, of like all these different universal monsters and all these different thi- like beasts from all these different eras, is that these are things that Dracula has encountered in his like immortal life, right? Mm-hmm. And so you ask, much the, like Wit, you know, yeah. much yeah. like yeah. Wit, and and you know, like Wit, who uh, tragically lost his wife dracula lost alucard's mother right right and alucard's mother is like sort of the paragon of virtue in this world and there was a part of dracula that loved that woman and that Mm -hmm. manifests itself in this tiny little chapel in this otherwise incredibly hostile environment where you can sit down with her ghost and just release all of that tension and emotion that you have in you like this is the last that, yeah. human part of this monster yeah mm-hmm. and, and, and there's something interesting too about it because uh lisa who is um dracula's dead wife is is human right isn't that isn't yeah. that the, the yes. idea so it's like yeah. she's a human who's married to a vampire and so and, and so alucard is 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 half human half vampire mm-hmm. and I feel like there's there's it's also in conversation with this idea of Dracula's own guilt, maybe yeah. guilt for the thing that he did for the for the person who he was with for, you know, the child. It it, it points to a lot of things that are never explicitly stated, no. which I actually mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. like. Yeah. I like that it gives you a very broad outline that you can choose to fill in however you want. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, It's such a strange but evocative small piece of storytelling. It's that, just there. Yeah. Yeah. It does something else that the Dark Souls, like other games do this, but like, again, coming back to the, the Souls games, like I think that the, the a lot of people I know who uh, have played this game and have played uh, Dark Souls, whatever, have occasionally been like, I don't know why, but they just remind me of each other. Mm. Kind of. They rhyme. And yeah. they are like, you know, for, for a lot of the reasons that we brought up. But one of the other things that I find interesting is that Dark Souls and Demon Souls are really uh, almost like obsessively interested in the religious like faith and practice and sort of rituals of the creatures in the area, even like the weird monsters. So, like mm-hmm. in like mm-hmm. there's because the, Dark Souls has a lot of those moments where you walk in and you're like, oh god, what fucked up weird religious shit have you guys been yeah. doing down here? <laughs> yeah, like this yeah. whole time, yeah. There's just a whole bunch of like if the 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 room outside of like Nito's. Uh, boss chamber sure. in Dark Souls One is 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 a similar thing where it's like a oh god what have you been doing kind yeah. of thing or like you've walked into their shame to, closet or, or yeah, e- like yeah even if it's like the bottom of the valley of defilement yeah in in Dark Souls in uh, Demon Souls right before you you bump into uh, Straya and it's just like a oh no <laughs> what has been going on here kind of thing yeah. and like yeah. Dark Souls Three has this whole chapel that you go into like the Chapel of the Deep and like mm-hmm. you can go up and there's just big kind of night enemy kind of guys they're just walking up to the uh, to the altar and kind of like praying or like sitting in the pews and praying and stuff and like it's like a i'm getting a view into these people's lives into like their culture like what their spirituality is or at least their religious traditions and stuff and i think that is one of the things that i think this game does is it likes to show you tiny little slice of life Mm -hmm. things occasionally Mm -hmm. of like well what are these things? Because this, these aren't like because a lot of these these monsters do just come off as yeah. This is sitting here for you to walk into. It's mm-hmm. like a trap or something. It's like a yeah. This doesn't really make sense in a like this is like a lived in space. But this feels like a space where like living happens. Where like yeah. a where time is spent. Where meaning is like made or mm-hmm. at least sort of an echo of it plays out or something. And I think that's so especially for the time period for like a Castlevania game. Yeah, like you're just yeah not getting a lot of that shit at all it's um it's just it's it was and again i it, it and there's nothing else in this that quite does that again which makes me wonder was this meant to be something else and we just we kind of got the truncated version of it that just happened to be this this sort of quiet brilliance <laughs> catholic wise though yes yeah how yeah. does this how, how does this shake out for you aj's experience? catholicism corner ah. let's go is Catholicism, Carner. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, it's you know, I've I've done confession. 
I'm a terrible Catholic. I did confession like two or three times uh, in my mm. whole life, and it was mostly me lying to a priest uh, about all the things I did. And mm -hmm. that sounds like Catholicism to me. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Yeah. Like yeah. You, you always kind of want to downplay. I think in terms of uh, this is about right. You either get a priest who sits there quietly and listens and like encourages you, or you get stabbed. <laughs> uh, <through a> curtain. <laughs> like that's those are the two options. That was the last of Sheila. But I I do think it's very interesting that Alec card plays the role of priest in this that you mm -hmm. are able mm -hmm. to go on the other side of the curtain and receive sort of the torment yeah. of mankind because that's that's his curse right mm -hmm. like he is he is powerful enough to fight against the evils of dracula so he's has to do that and take on mankind's burden against these beasts for his whole life and he was born into it it wasn't something he chose for himself but he chooses to do it because he wants to protect the humanity that's inside of him that is reflected in his mother. And right. I, I, I think there is something incredibly powerful in that choice. I, the thing that, that, you know, we talk about the plot being silly and cheesy. I, I found so much richness in Alucard as a character because yeah. he is yeah. born into this horrifically cursed situation. Well, well you know, I, I do say cheesy, but like cheesy can be fun and it right. doesn't necessarily negate the serious level of engagement that AJ, yeah. I was obsessed with this shit when I was a teenager. This oh, yeah. got me to re <laughs> like playing Portrait of Ruin, which stars Jonathan Morris, grandson of Quincy Morris, made me like, I have to read Dracula. I have to mm. read this fucking book right now. It's one of my favorite yeah. books, honestly. But, um, wow. The, the the lore of these games goes so deep because there are so many other supplemental materials. There is a radio drama that is a sequel to Symphony of the Night that Konami oh produced. God. What? That you can you can actually find it on YouTube. Someone someone put it up with English subtitles. It, but oh like, wow! Yeah, uh, which we'll we'll link to in the description. Is it just like it, does it just dramatize the, a playthrough of a perspective sequel or whatever? It's like. It's like it definitely, like, like, you know, walk, 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 open door. And it's just like, ah, I'm no, I, I mean, it, it is I a, you've come to stab me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is about like meetings between certain characters. You got Maria. You got this other guy who's like an incubus. And you got this dude that Alucard seems to have quite a lot of feelings for who mm -hmm. gets killed. Ooh. Spoilers. Oh, sorry. No. Um, but it's 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 interesting. I, I, hmm. Seek it. I mean, this I love this shit. I love this. Yeah. Shit. I love I love the way that it all interacts with each other. I was so disappointed that I could not get into the the Castlevania TV show on Netflix because yes. I was like I was I was I was waiting for it, baby. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, you're the target cool, audience. Yeah, it had some cool bits to it, if I remember correctly. But um, it was it was a little it was a little quippy. In yeah, ways I couldn't that I get couldn't. past the dialogue. Yeah, yeah, it was a little quippy. It had some cool animation though yeah. going on in it. Well, speaking of cool animation, mm. one of my favorite levels uh, that you get to in the castle is the long library. Love it. Mm. Um, it's so this long. Is long. It's it's very long as far as libraries go. Long library is long. Huh? <laughs> that's that's one of the new memes I haven't caught up with yet. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. The library is interesting because when you get there for the first time, as with everything in the game, it's like, oh wow, this is something wild. This is something new. This is something different. Yep, I'm getting um, hit by books. The books are hitting me. Books, and visually, these are in 3D. Yeah. They, they, it, and I wish there was more of this in the game because the vast majority of the enemies are, you know, pixel art and they look amazing. Yeah. And, but, and they were taken from Rondo of Blood and a couple other mm -hmm. you know right. like there, there's yeah. was a weird complaint people are like i can't believe people like this it's just the sprites from rondo of blood oh, i'm get like the fuck nobody out of here. play this yeah that's why tears of the kingdom is such a bad game right yeah. because it reused assets from breath of get the fuck out yeah, of here it's, yeah. but, uh, recycling is good i like that it's japanese studios seem to be a little less reticent to recycle things but like look at the from games everybody yeah. loves them and they just yeah. like yeah. throw old shit in it's great anyway about about these books right they are rendered loving in three dimensions and they are they are taking full advantage of the PlayStation's really unique dithering effects to give them this sort of cool shaded appearance yeah. Yeah. and they just they, they fly out of the bookcase in the in the background and then they just sort of get big and you have to whack them and then when you whack them they like go <laughs> and then they, yeah, they, they sort set of like, on fire and they set on fire and slowly. characters yeah. characters and pages start flying yeah. out of the book as it's yeah. so cool yeah I, I, I don't know why they didn't do more of this because it is maybe as far as like your basic enemies go. It, it's one of my favorite designs. The, 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 it's, it's just so fucking cool. And as you go through this library, you get the sense of like, 
wait, this is a library. So surely there must be a librarian, right? Surely mm. there must be. Uh, and, and, and yes, turns out there is. Um, mm-hmm. Turns out also that this is one of the few for profit librarians out <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. You have a yeah. brief conversation with him. And uh, after that, you can finally use all of those dollars that you've been just randomly finding around yep. the castle. He sells an <laughs> item that is, uh, you get a lot of cloaks in the game that uh, mm-hmm. yeah. change the color design of Alucard yeah. in very cool yeah. ways. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes change, I didn't want to. Change wanna... your color when you turn into a bat, too. Yeah, yeah. And I, mm-hmm. did, I didn't want to. Bat! <laughs> well, that's the other thing. We'll get to that mechanic, too, because I really <laughs> want to talk about that. But like, uh, sometimes I didn't want to give uh, away a cloak because I really like the color scheme on it. And mm-hmm. then the highest cloak you can get is called Joseph's cloak, and it's yeah. a Technicolor dream coat. Yeah, you look handsome. Uh-huh. You look smart. Yeah, yeah. it is. You're it a is, walking work of art. What a mm. what a cool and interesting reference. I actually think that the way this game plays with Christianity is mm-hmm. is kind mm-hmm. of fascinating. I There's a lot love, of it in there. I yeah. love. Uh, like anime and video game appropriations of Christianity but uh, like and, and the way that Castlevania does it is just such a weird hodgepodge of all of these these things and, and I love I love the way that different things pop out and I'm so glad that the evangelicals never knew about Castlevania because they yes. would have thrown a fucking fit I think my favorite zone in the in the whole game is the uh, old rocks zone which again is supposed to be mm. Orlock from uh, yeah. Nosferatu the, the music is different it's all kind of Everything is sort of this uh, beige marble and everything like that. It feels like yeah. you're kind of walking around in a museum. At the base of that is this clock. And the clock yeah. is a really interesting device, too, because it has yeah. these very obvious secrets to it. There's, mm-hmm. uh, you, you can enter from the left or the right. There's this channel that goes straight up, and you, you're yep. going to have to find some way to jump high enough or fly the bat high enough or whatever. This is also where you get all of the fake a la carte stuff. There's one statue that blocks your way on the upper left that will reappear and disappear every minute. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you just have to wait. And just a lot of speedrunning things is, are based on making sure that you hit it when it's open. Mm, and so yeah. you, you root it so that there's some stuff that like, it's like, yeah, you could take shorter or longer in this early part, but you root it oh. so that you're like, okay, I can come back into that one later. But if I get, uh, if I can hit the eight minute mark, I can hit the, my first possible. Yeah, because it doesn't, it's not like you have to stand in the room for a minute. It's a minute of, of play time. And there's, yeah. there's another like weirder mechanic about like certain items that are stronger when the moon is out versus when the sun is out. But the game doesn't actually have a day night cycle that you can observe. It's mm. just about first six hours you play. It's uh, it's like oh. nighttime, oh. and then from six to eighteen, it's daytime, and then from eight, et, et cetera, et cetera. God, this game's so fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> Why, Scott? That reminds me of the game that we talked about when we did the live show for No Cartridge, Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery, where like there's this whole thing involving like the phases of the moon and like and, and Twitter, yeah, yeah, <laughs> just like Symphony of the Night. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of Twitter integration, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Into that. yeah, I think that like Symphony of the Night uh, and Sword and Sorcery is another like I've I've, I've Cited uh, Sword and Sorcery as the game that made me think, oh, I can make video games. Okay, mm. cool. And I think um, it, it has a similar sort of thing of like those sort of like hidden mechanics, or not, maybe not entirely hidden, but like hidden in a non punitive way. Yeah. Kind of thing yeah. of the like obscured, um, I think a co worker, yeah, was called kind of like, yeah, obscured mechanics or something yeah. where it's like a, no, this is there. This is an underlying system that is working. If you don't know about it, it you either might not notice it or you would just fold that into what is your understanding, like this sort of mm-hmm. normative experience of it. But if you do know about it, like you can get the hint of like, there's something happening here and I don't quite mm-hmm. know what it is. And you can kind of like put it together or not. And then, yeah, or the, uh, cause the original Super Brothers thing was they wanted to make you wait, essentially. Yeah, right. It's like, right. hey, you can only play this far until this day in real life, but you can also find the moon grotto and sit there yeah. and kind of advance time more or less. Mm-hmm. And it's really pretty. It doesn't really tell you exactly why it's doing it, but the, when it shows up, you're like, ah, back to that clock, right? Yeah. There's another channel that goes up to the right and you can open that up by, by a totally different means. You know, it's not related yep. in any way. You get the stopwatch item. 
Yeah. And you use the stopwatch item mm-hmm. there, which is usually just a thing that makes enemies stop moving. And the map usually shows you like all the doorways and where they lead, right? When you're looking at the map, uh, except for secret openings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This one has a very obvious door in the floor. It's not a it's not secret. You don't have to hit something and break it to make it appear. But that door is not open and it does right. not show up on the map as a door. Mm-hmm. Put a pin in that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those are just a few of the amazing locations in in this game and, and seriously like we could we could yeah. we could keep talking you about sound like a travel agent Josh I know <laughs> <laughs> these are just a few of the amazing locations on offer at Dracula's <laughs> Castlevania like, uh, yes and if you would like more fantastic locations like this don't forget to go to patreon.com slash worst of all where for merely five dollars a month no um I I'm also fascinated by the design of enemies in this game. And we've talked a little bit about like the smaller enemies, but I did just want to take a moment to touch on the bosses because yeah. they are so cool. And there are, yeah, they are and plentiful. There's a lot of them. Yes. Like a whole lot. All over and the place. Very few of them do you actually have to fight to, mm-hmm. to, get, to get to even the 200%. In the original, uh, in the first castle, I'm forgetting again, it's been it's been a couple of years since I've speed run it, but like um, you really only, there's just a few kind of gateway bosses and one that like, you know, drops like a couple of things. But that's about it because a lot of the actual progression in this is based on like we talked about some of those like I need to find abilities which is essentially finding an item yeah and yeah. stuff like you're not leveling up into that you're not grinding at that out it's just a can you get there and find it yeah mm-hmm. so most of the progression in this game is item gated more than anything else with the occasional uh there's a guy there's a boss standing between you and this thing that's right. it, mm-hmm. like kind of thing but the actual thing that you're fighting is isn't usually so much as a oh well i killed this guy and then and then i moved on and then that was the goal it was like no i moved on and got an item that was there mm-hmm. yeah and then a yeah. lot of your other progression is just items you can find around so it's just item 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 and the second uh castle which we'll get to is only Get these five items. That's it. You that's can, it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Buzz your way. It has. There's a lot more that you can go do. A whole lot more. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It's just like that is just like the icing on top. It's just like a nine foot layer of icing on this game. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But like, but I mean, because all you're doing that's like second one is just. Hey, do you remember, remember Castlevania 2 how you had to get like it's like five or six organs? Just do that again. I, I I'm so impressed with the size of some of these bosses very literally like how big they are yeah. which again yeah. this is something you could only do with the playstation this would not have been possible on the super nintendo or whatever wow shots <laughs> fired yeah. i know um <laughs> you it wouldn't even be possible on the sega genesis with blast Whoa. processing oh, hey. oh my um, wait hold on sonic fanboys are gonna come hey, for you hold on, hold on hold on sega does what nintendo don't i know yeah. I, I, two bosses that i just wanted to point up the yeah. two that stick with me because they're both so horrible Horrifying yeah. are the Legion, which is just a gigantic sphere of bodies. Yeah, the uh, Grand Falloon's the other grand, name for it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's horrifying. It's yeah. so fucking good. That's yeah. also yeah. just brilliant, brilliant translation there, calling it Grand Falloon. Well, that's a Vonnegut term, isn't it? It mm-hmm. is. It's from Cat's yeah. Cradle. Yeah, it's a it's a false association of people. Like being a Hoosier. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. And, yeah. and so basically at the core of this boss is this gross like nucleus, basically. Yeah. But the way that you get to the core is hitting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of bodies, yeah. all of which have one HP. Yeah. A sphere <laughs> of nude people. Yeah. It's a sphere uh, of like essentially like either people, either kind of like zombies because they just feel like corpses yeah. too because you're, yeah. down in the, you're down in the catacombs right. and like... This has like I have a general unified theory of like good video game, which is your what's your skeleton content? Like, <laughs> oh, sure. yeah. oh, these skeletons are spooky. Oh, yeah, spooky, uh, spooky skeletons. Very scary. Yeah. Lots of skeletons. Like um, again, this is one of the reasons why the Dark Souls games are great is because mm-hmm. they have excellent skeleton content. Yeah. And, like, oh hell yeah. The <laughs> sometimes they have skeletons wear hats. <laughs> I'm folding the I'm folding in the Grand Falloon into essentially skeleton stuff because well you're in a room that's full of skeletons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, these are these are human bodies, but it's a similar thing. Yeah. There's a bunch of like dead corpses. Yeah, they yeah. have flesh, stuff. but ultimately they're just shambling along. You know. Right. Yeah, and, and yeah. that's that's among, worth noting because that background is so gorgeous these like oh, piles yeah. of bones that are yeah, just like going the back for miles have some unbelievably gorgeous rooms where you just walk in and it's like those those those, those catacombs that are in um this is set up like almost like a living room kind of thing yeah. where it's like they it's, you, it's like you have all the people cozy. dressed up in there yeah yeah this feels kind of cozy like this is <laughs> this catacomb feels like 
I could like run the I could run the vacuum through it or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that sort of vibe. There's so many little like nooks and crannies down there. And then yeah, you you come into this room and there's this big fucking horrifying thing. And Ugh. then like when you when you're when you're hitting it, it's not like you're like, oh, I'm I'm knocking away one corpse. It's like, no, they they fall off in chunks. Yes. Yeah. And then stand up and start walking towards you. And they're really, I mean, it's one HP. They're just kind of pitiful kind of things but like they're more just barriers than anything else but i just love like the oh yeah a huge chunk of like three dozen people fall well, and off it's, it's, it's more about yeah. like it, it's the thing that great horror does right where it's about how it makes you feel and what it makes you think like it yeah. points to and part of this is due to the art style it, it points to something so much worse mm-hmm. and, and it's just like mm-hmm. what the fuck is this again yeah. it's that what has been going on down here right. feeling yeah. that is so that is so good. Yeah, that whole that whole room because you're like, why? Why is it here? But I'm not questioning it because this does seem like the bullshit that would take place down here. That I think that that was just legit mind blowing and when I first saw it. I just never seen anything like yeah, it. The like, sound, yeah, the sound the sound design is also does a lot of work there yeah. because when the corpses fall, they make kind of squishy noises, but they also go yeah, oh. yeah. like there's like yeah. <laughs> I love I love the sounds oh, no. of, I love the sounds of most enemies in this game, and they all kind of sound like ha ha like they're like little yeah. like Muppet versions, and it kind of like you also, cuts the terror just enough. Uh, you also get little bonuses on the PlayStation 4 and I'm assuming 5 AJ. Yeah. Because it has a speaker in the controller, they have designed certain sounds to come through the controller as yeah. well. Oh, cool. So sometimes it's a, it's a little bit at random, but a lot of times there's sort of a logic to it. So like anytime that you're fighting a monster that's like a sexy lady and there are quite yeah. a few of those, <laughs> when she dies and screams, she screams through the controller. Mm. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. The small subclass of enemies that are sort of like, you know, like kind of pinups, yeah. for yeah. lack of better words. Yeah. Sure. It's like, the like, hey, I'm the sexy, sassy witch and stuff and if you kill me i turn into a little cute cat yep or something <laughs> yeah. or like the the, the 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 like the nude the topless woman who is sort of like the angler fish uh mm-hmm. white bulb or whatever mm-hmm. kind of thing um and it's uh, and they, they have they have great kind of just like giggle giggle vocal samples to it it's just like really funny where they're just like hello, hello i'm the sexy enemy we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> get to the sexy plant lady the only other thing the, the other big boss that really made an impact on me was beelzebub Oh God! Big, yeah. g- oh. big like zombie being held up by tenter hooks, including yeah. one that's going through his mouth. He is rotting. He is falling apart. There are gigantic, disgusting flies everywhere. Maggots are dropping from oh, his body. I didn't fight him this time. I knew I was oh. missing something. He's he's an exceptionally optional boss. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like, you you really have to go out of your way to fight him. But yeah, like not only do you not have to fight him, but you have to actually kind of because he's where Gallimoth and Slugger, whoever. Yeah, yeah that, that, like Which one of those I, early boss like, fights. Yeah, yeah, Frank Peretti demon names. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's just like the Galgamoth. or like 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 Carmen song. It's like it's like the, I am the demon like Slogamoth or something. <laughs> but like uh, Malanga. Yeah, there, there we is. go. There it is. Thank you. You might just accidentally bump into yeah. him, boss. Yeah. kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. There's a few like kind of just random like myth- mythological kind of ones. Mm-hmm. There's like uh, Cerberus is there, Medusa yeah. is there, but Medusa is one of those like uh, bosses that's just been there from the start. Same thing with the. Frankenstein, it's all yeah. the universal ones plus Medusa yeah. and death or whatever. They're just kind of like randomly kind of kicking around. This is where the whole, are these his friends? Are these, right, his, yeah, and right. are, are these his employees? Are these his tenants? And you can kind of be like, okay, well, the ones that have been there from the start, like Medusa is, is his friend or Ride something. Ride or die. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or- Orlocks, I, I cannot figure out if he's, uh, or all rocks. Yeah. I can, uh, <laughs> like, I can't figure well, he's out an if enemy he's, if you ask Bram Stoker's widow. Ha ha. Ha ha. In 1917, this would have killed. <laughs> I, um, You're only 115 I, years, 116 years no, too no, late. No, 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 no. But to Brian, it's just a single day because he lives in Dracula's castle. That's funny because, like, I, a while ago, I remember like, on Twitter seeing someone referring to, like, Dracula. They're like, oh, well, can you use that? Because that's just, like, someone else's IP. And I'm like, I think that, I think that Dracula. I mean, sure, I guess, if you're going back like 100 years. I think years, Drax's in the public domain by this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty okay. It, thankfully, we point. don't have a, a, an Arthur Conan Doyle situation. The first time you play through the game, assuming that you are not, like, going through everything and being a total completionist, the boss who you will first encounter and, and, and who seems to be the final boss of the game is not Dracula at all. It's actually no. just Richter Belmont. Yeah. Who you'll yeah. remember from the beginning you, of the game. You, and you probably saw a little bit earlier, too, when you were in the arena. Because he sicks mm-hmm. a couple monsters on you. Right. Yeah. Says it's his castle. 
Yeah. So you strange, mm-hmm. strange behavior from so Belmont. Odd. Richter Belmont from Rondo of Blood. Oh my god! <laughs> you, wow. you know, go up to that the the, the very same uh, yeah. set of stairs that you were at at the very beginning of the game. You go into the very same room, and yeah. rather than Dracula sitting there, it's it, it's Richter, and, and you yeah. you fight him because fight he, him? Dema- he demands you give him a Rondo of Blood, and you say right. Mm-hmm. no, right? Yeah, yeah. and uh, he dies, and the game's over, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the full credits roll. You you see the cutscene. The castle collapses. You get a, Alucard, a, a Disney he's, uh, end of Disney movie in the '90s, like adult contemporary song. Yeah, yeah. essentially they're like Beauty and the Beast type song. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that's it. It's yeah. that's a that's a GG, right, boys? Oh, here we go. Mm. Oh, I'm in a waiting room <laughs> in a dentist's office. Oh, oh God. This I'm song is my uh, exacerbating my heart condition. <laughs> Frank Wildhorn tried to bring that to Broadway. Um, <laughs> I am absolutely positively going to call into Delilah someday and ask her to play I Am The Wind. <laughs> yeah, and fun fact, because it's another Konami game, this same vocalist sang Snake Eater. Yeah. Uh, there's a great Kotaku article about it that is in the description. I do a little pointing motion whenever I say in the description, <laughs> like I'm a YouTuber. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't yeah. Have do. Video. Uh, yeah. Does Delilah still exist? Oh, she still exists as You're fuck, Scott. Me. I, I was, okay. She has a whole studio in her home. She did this long before COVID. She has this fucking like ranch compound. She's adopted yep. like a thousand kids. Yep. <laughs> uh, she takes care of like llamas and shit, and she is going strong. I was, uh, the yeah, thing it, is, we don't talk about Delilah. We all know Delilah, but there's right. a bit, never been a discourse about Delilah, and I'm going to start it, okay. God damn it. Yeah. I don't know what it's about yet, but we're going to talk be about, about her. It should be about her kids. It needs to be like it's problematic to adopt too many kids. That could really get a good couple yeah. days of discourse we, we, we going. Talk about the... I genuinely have no idea what any of you are talking what? about. What oh, is okay. Delilah? You yeah. know who is Delilah? What? What? No. What? No. what the fuck, Delilah. AJ? Did you never Delilah. go Delilah? <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you, did you ever turn on any... Wait a second. Wait a second. There we there go. Thank you. Did you never turn on any radio in the United States between like after yeah, 6 p.m.? I was listening to Kixie 96.5 in San Diego, the soft rock station. They never well, played a, Delilah. I can't believe they didn't play this Delilah. Is like that, 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 I would expect them to syndicate Delilah after yeah. 7 p.m. or whatever. This is going like, to be yeah. really embarrassing when someone from San Diego writes in saying, yeah, they play Delilah all the time. I but bet I, they yeah, do they, not. No, she's syndicated everywhere. She's a program. AJ. She's a block. Yeah. She takes up the last hour of the worst of all possible worlds. You haven't been listening. Well, clearly yeah. I don't listen to the it's podcast. It's been a big draw for the audience. I don't That's listen either. So she's still doing like dedications and like oh, whatever. Oh, you know it. I oh, was yes. in the grocery oh, yes. store. Like last week I was out and about and I was like, it needed to oh, get Oh yeah, they're like, always playing her at Key Foods in Brooklyn. Oh, at Sunak Foods? You pop into your local Sunak Foods? Yeah, like I remember hearing Delilah, like I would go to this uh, Chinese buffet in Grand Rapids that always had Delilah on, but the main thing, <laughs> the main right, thing I associate yeah. with, with Delilah and adult contemporary music, which is also the first time I heard the song You Are My Home, which ended up in the musical The Scarlet Pimpernel by Frank Wildhorn. Anyway, that's a different obsession of Brian's. <laughs> Frank Wildhorn. <laughs> was whenever we would go to Albuquerque, which is a two hour drive away from where I grew up, that's, you know, we'd lose the Christian stations a few minutes out of town. Mm. So then we'd listen to like Magic FM or some shit that would play mm. out of Albuquerque. And so in oh, yeah, the evening, yeah, yeah. whenever we were coming back from Albuquerque, that would be Delilah. Okay. So I always just associate it with like the yeah. sun setting and me being very aware of the passage of time and my own mortality. I also yeah. associate Delilah with sun setting. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, Delilah has a lot of children and, and Dracula has a lot of monsters. And, and they're one his child. Sh- and in a way, child. And one, one child. Night. Yes. Um, and again, like if you just play through the game, you'll get to the end. You'll be like, well, what the yeah. fuck happened to Dracula? Well, turns yeah. out there are two rings that you need to get. One of them is in the basically top left corner of the map. The yep. other one is in the top right or no bottom right corner of the bottom map yeah. basically generally yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's really clever because there's this hallway you see in the chapel area very early on that is like very obviously oh once i become the bat i can come through here because there's right. spikes on this on the floor and the ceiling so you just have right. to be a bat and go through it except nope it's not nope. good enough because you have to open a door so right. you need another yeah. item from another corner of the right. map to get yeah. through yeah. and yes, that will I give you one her. of the rings once you get to these two rooms you will learn two very important pieces of plot 
Number yeah. one is that Maria knows that Richter, or as she says, Richter, is <laughs> Rich, Richter. Yeah, the original Richter. voice actor. Yeah. It's very funny. Um, is not the like the, this isn't him. It's totally not him. Something yeah. is going on. Something is and, wrong. And Maria was the little girl five years right. ago. Now right. she's an she's, adult. She's presumably. canonically 17, which is very okay. funny considering what her voice sounds like, especially yeah. in the original. Yeah. And she in sounds the, 40 <laughs> in the bottom right hand corner. You come across uh, a, a dream sequence where where Alucard sees his own mother. But yeah. in this dream sequence, she's getting crucified and she's like, I need you to kill all the humans. And Alucard's like, no, that's not right. That's not what she said. And then it turns out that it's actually a succubus. Yeah. And then you have to defeat the succubus. Lots to unpack there. And the Lots succubus seems like yeah. it's, it's not just a succubus. It's like a succubus Alucard knows. And like yes. she's she's definitely one of Dracula's friends. Yes, like, yeah. she she could very well be like one of the brides of Dracula. Yeah, yeah she sucks you way. off. Yeah, and so uh, she sucks you, bus. <laughs> and <laughs> suck to my bus anyway. Yeah, beep, 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 beep. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> what happens then is you get these two rings and inscribed on the rings are instructions yeah. that you need to put them on and stand in like below yeah. the clock and it's yeah. really clever because one gives you the first and third word mm -hmm. and then the other one in the item description again very dark souls item descriptions are important here mm -hmm. the yeah. other one in its item description gives you the second and fourth word right. right so if you look at them together you should be able to piece it together I found out from the internet but and yeah so <laughs> right. you put the rings on you stand in the place the clock goes nutty it goes nutty I think it dings 13 times okay George Orwell the floor opens up and now you are in a brand new place that yeah, you have never weird, seen before. like suspended chamber yeah that looks yeah. like it's upside down so anyway yeah you meet Maria inside and she's like yes. fight me and you're like what and she throws a baby yeah. tiger at you and you're like ah and you have to like yeah. actually like defeat her to prove that you are able to defeat Richter because as it turns out she suspects that he's under the possession of a uh, of some malevolent forces yeah uh, she doesn't quite but know what He's he's under the control of a bad mother. Shut your mouth. I'm just talking about Shaft. Yeah, we can dig it. Because his name is Shaft. <laughs> his name is Shaft. Yes. And, 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 and it really does. It's very funny. It takes you yeah. right out of the moment. It's like, we're talking about Shaft? Yeah. <laughs> he's uh, he's from the, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you remember him from Rondo of Blood, Dracula X. Yeah. But he's, oh, yeah. He's kind of, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's kind of set up there too. Yeah. yeah. Like, like we've we've been we've been thinking about Shaft for many years now, and we're finally mm -hmm. getting a resolution to this entire finally. Shaft arc. So you get these holy glasses. Yeah. And the, they're an equipable item. You go back up to fight Richter. You put on the glasses and then you see that there are orbs above him. There's this orb. Yeah. Ooh, the orb is controlling him. You whack the orb. And then you realize, oh, that's the orb that is Shaft. Shaft yeah. is, is 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 orb form. And once yeah. I mean, I, in I the original film, he's an orb. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and we can all dig it. An entire second castle comes down from the sky. Yes. You yeah. are the halfway through the descends. game. <laughs> and it is it is goddamn upside down. Yep. And you realize that awkwardly, this entire thing can be played upside down. If you can suddenly jump up walls real high sometimes, yeah. if yeah. you need to, yeah, if yeah. you can basically fly, uh, yep. you can play that whole part of the game uh, upside down. And you can fly because you have the ability to become a become mist or a bat. There's this incredible moment where you realize, wait, the reason that that one room had spikes on the ceiling is so that they can be spikes on the floor yeah. when it's upside down. Like all yeah. of these things, it's like how the fuck did they do for, this? For the yeah. most part, a lot of this map does feel like bonus content in that it's like, it's not the easiest to traverse. It's right. a little bit like, no, it's the exact same layout upside down. Some of the, the torches are hard to hit now to get your right. little hearts. Yeah. But like there are new enemies. Mm, there are yeah. of course the new and bosses. They are hard, they are and, hard yeah, as balls. And weird. Yeah. yeah. And and like they're just much weirder grab bag of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The hardest boss is this guy who's in the now upper right corner. 
you know, the cat it, where the Grand Falloon was, I think. Yeah. A- and he just shoots lightning at you and just kicks your ass. And he's like a boss from one of the side games. I think he's, he's from Kid Galamoth. Dracula. Uh, yeah, he's from yeah. Kid Dracula, I believe. Yeah, yeah something like and that. And so he's yeah. like, he, he's got his own lore because he tried to usurp Dracula's castle from Dracula oh, and everything. So but also, you can find a secret item in a special chamber and all the secrets are in the same place. They work sometimes like a little bit differently. And you can find an item where all of his attacks will heal you and then you can just kick his yeah, ass. Yeah, that's <laughs> He also has a shit ton of health. So even yeah. if you do, oh, it takes forever. Yeah, I get that. It takes a very, very long time to bring him <laughs> yeah. down. Unless you have the shield rod, in which case, yeah, instantly you're done. Or if you can get the fuck is it called? The Chris Angel. Uh, the Chris Angel. <laughs> because that that is something that is uh, that sword. I'm just gonna call it the Chris Angel from here on out. Yeah. Yeah. Gets yeah. dropped by something known as a shmoo. Uh, mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. if you defeat enough shmoos, eventually a shmoo will drop a Chris Angel, and okay. the Chris Angel <laughs> is like the ultimate sword. So I feel like I'm having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> the shmoo kind of looks like, if I remember correctly, isn't it like sort of look like a, a ghost, like in the sense of like it's got like a little yeah, like, sheet over its it's, head. Yeah. It's like a white sheet that flies at you. And, and that shows up in the upside down library where you can mm-hmm. fight against a scarecrow, a tin man and a lion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but the lion has like Wolverine God claws. God damn it, I didn't catch that. That's yeah. so good. It's not like a, oh, this looks like an Oz character. It's like a... No. The scarecrow is a guy who's just like impaled, like the Vlad the yeah. Impaler type, uh, just yeah, hopping around, it's just like it's kind just of like bouncing. hopping around, just kind of like great. flopping and stuff. And then the Tin Man's this little kind of like steam robot kind of like like a battle bot. Yeah, it, it doesn't really look like a human. Yeah, the lion does not look like it belongs in no. this game oh, at no. all. No, it's, not it's, a, a it's a brave lion. In but a suit yeah, of armor. He's like a biped with Wolverine like claws <laughs> yes, yeah. and like a suit. <laughs> I, 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 I think, though, that what's so cool about the, the second castle, the inverted castle, yeah. is that you do get this ramp and difficulty that happens pretty quickly. But now yeah. you have the tools and you understand the core gameplay loop so fundamentally that, yeah, it's harder but it's not actually like it doesn't feel yeah. like oh god damn it in, in a way it almost feels easier because you've yeah. already figured out how to play the game well it's yeah. funny the first time i played the a lot of the vertical sections of the game are a lot harder now because they've filled right. them with all these enemies that can kind of swarm you as you're making mm-hmm. your way through yeah and this time i played i was like wait a second i can just turn into mist right and so yeah. i just floated through right. the castle yeah. yeah when you're missed they can't hurt <laughs> and you and it's so satisfying to be in a part of the map that now you feel you know even if you don't yeah. because it is mm-hmm. just the castle mm-hmm. inverted you're going through and realizing oh wait i know how to navigate this because i just spent all those hours in the lower right. castle mm-hmm. and yeah. it's it, it it fills you with that like joy of like oh no i actually got this this is yeah. this is actually completely manageable and you defeat Dracula's five BFFs, I guess, yeah. and get yeah. a piece of his yeah. organs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these are these are all the original bosses from Castlevania One, and they're oh. holding pieces of his body and his ring, which are all from Castlevania Two. Okay, yeah. And so, so you're, yeah, you, you yeah, beat Medusa and Frankenstein and a big bat. It's all his. Uh, it's all his bros, and yeah. then just a bunch of big random guys like Beelzebub. You've got and false stuff. clones of the Belmonts who you can fight. It's it's oh, it's just yeah. So yeah. Cool. And I think it, it goes to show like the reason you have to be patient with this game. It's because it'll throw this at you and you beat your head against the wall going, I don't know how to defeat mm. all these guys because yeah. you're used to just fighting yeah. them. And the game's answer, but you don't have the game's to. answer yeah. is just like, but maybe don't, though. Just right. run through it or float through it as mist. That's a viable strategy, too. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, there's been a lot of discourse with Tears of the Kingdom of how to correctly play a game and how so many games make you play them in a very specific mm-hmm. way because that is the right way to do things. Mm-hmm. And Castlevania is one of those ones where especially Symphony of the Night, where it's just like, yeah. Yeah, there is whatever works is the correct way to play the game. Yeah. Like whatever yeah, right. gets you through that nightmare right. hallway is actually the correct way to play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, the, the, if there's a, if there's a correct way, I think, to play this game and not all games are like this. And I don't think like older Castlevanias, especially the ones that are in more straightforward side scrolling. This isn't the case as much, but this mm-hmm. is a game where like, I think the, the correct way to play it is just settle in, hang out, poke at it yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Enjoy enjoy it for what it's going to throw at you because if you are just trying to like go like okay i need to defeat this as a challenge immediately Mm -hmm. yeah you're gonna get probably lost and confused and annoyed and stuff but if you are kind of like a i want to poke through here i want to get the little jokes that it's doing i want to check out the interesting little art things because it's a really funny game yeah Yeah. it's really funny there's a skeleton that runs around kicking his own head 
in front of him yeah. like a soccer ball and his name is Yorick. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. It's and, so and, dumb but so good. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. To, to the point of like exploration and kind of taking it all on, if by the time you get to Dracula and fight him, you've already pretty much collected everything because you've explored both castles. He's pretty trivial to beat, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I, even my first run, when I was really, really bad at the game, like, I, I I, literally got hit on every single one of his attacks, but I had so much mm-hmm. health it didn't matter. I just yeah. outlasted yeah. him. Yeah. But, if you're the kind of person who values more of a challenge, you can choose to just not get the health pickups. Like, th- yeah. that's that's totally a way that you can play, and mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. I love yeah. all of the different ways that this game allows you to engage with it, with Without being prescriptive, you know, just just to wrap up what happens, you defeat Dracula, you win, the castle disappears. But the the, the real when we talk about you know Castlevania and. The stuff we're not really talking about, like, oh, it's super memorable story, other than a few beats which we've discussed. What we I talk th- about when we talk about Gasoline. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think that what sticks with us is the things about the gameplay itself. You know, yeah. you talk about your Metroidvanias and the way that you come back to the same areas in different contexts and you see different things. Even though the game was reasonably well received but not rapturously so at its release its impact is just fucking unreal and you go back and you play it again and it's like oh this is the beginning of so many things yeah one of my big problems is i was trying to play it like hollow knight which is mm, a yeah. very different combat mechanic. Yeah. But also, yeah. Hollow Knight now makes so much more sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. The- How about those elevators and shit? Yeah. yeah. It's like, there's there's so much. It's like, it is, it is one of those things. It's like when you watch, like, I don't know, it's like you've never seen The Godfather or Jaws or something mm-hmm. before. Then you watch it and you're like, I haven't. I've seen this. I've yeah. seen yeah. this yeah. before without yeah. having seen it. Symphony of the Night is one of those games that you're just like, I played side scrolling games uh, in the past. 10 years maybe 10 to 15 years you yeah. have seen this game and and also 3d games if you yeah, kind of know you what can, you're looking I mean, for and stuff, honestly but. like darks the very the first dark souls is a castlevania game in 3d yeah, that, so that actually works very much like one. you know yeah. like there, there's no teleportation until towards the end um everything is so interestingly interlocked and there are all these fun surprises when you're like oh i'm back here now that's mm-hmm. how these places all connect. And they use yeah. that to tell these stories. They have these optional bosses. There are weird places in Dark Souls where it's just like, this doesn't need to be here, but it is yeah. here. You yeah. know? It, it totally is really similar in that way, too. It also has this sort of like bosses and they're uh, kind of occasionally randomly, but also thematically fits. So one of the things that this game does, Hollow Knight does this, and I think the best of these games who are doing this kind of thing to do Mm -hmm. uh, is the way that they make use of the mechanics and the way that make use of the world is there are different, it's almost like different cultural districts of of, of the map kind of thing of like a, okay, I'm, I'm down in the catacombs, but the catacombs make sense in relation to the chapel because yeah. like, oh, there is a there's yeah. something here like i'm th- th- this this holds together as a piece is similar to something like dark souls where it's like a oh i'm going down to this level which sits on top of this level and even if it's dream logic it makes some sort of yeah, sense yeah, so, yeah, here's yeah. where all the hollow sewage knight, has been running down and yeah. yeah like hollow knight does this um a lot uh and is a much more coherent map kind of thing. It doesn't have as much of the dream logic. Uh, another game that I've played that is a Metroidvania I really love is Cave Story. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, that's, yeah. The, that's the OG indie one. It really yeah. is. What happened sort of during the the mid 2000s was people started playing Super Metroid in Castlevania again yeah. and realized that there was something uniquely intoxicating about this combination of gameplay mechanics, style and 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 aesthetic. I didn't say this up top. I had never played this game before. I recorded it for this podcast. Oh, okay. I knew yeah, the yeah. I knew the, um, you know, what is a man, a miserable little pile of secrets just from the memes. Yeah. And I had it memorized for that exact same reason. <laughs> but it's one I'd always been meaning to play, but just was always kind of intimidated by because it, yeah. it's, it just seemed a little bit inaccessible. And I was so just floored once I started to get into it. It's the opposite of inaccessible. It yeah. is. It yeah. is, in fact, accessible. <laughs> it is an extremely <laughs> playful game. It, it is in the yeah. same way that, like, again, this is this is such a discourse thing. But I, I think that Dark Souls is very accessible if you are not trying to play it like you would play Bayonetta or like an mm. action game. If you yeah. are not trying to play it like a game where I'm just going to run up and if I just execute this perfectly, I can just run through here to here. It's like, no, take your time. 
chill out, yeah. enjoy. And you may not, that's fine, but this yeah. is not a game that is going to reward, okay, I need, I'm going to go and just be like an expert at first because you can't be, and that's also not the point. Like, yeah. you know, like if you go back through and replay, like, I mean, that's the thing. It's like if like oftentimes, usually when a Souls game comes out, I'll like play it and then I'll immediately go and like New Game Plus it multiple times over, just getting over. And each time that playthrough is like half the length easy the next oh, time because you know yeah, it's a run yeah. past. You know, I've heard people say like, oh, well, those games, you can just like run past everything if you want. I'm like, yeah, that's the. Yeah, that's you're the right. Point. If, you, if yeah. you don't engage with the game and what it's doing, yes, you will not have a very fun time with it. And so yeah. it becomes fun to run past that stuff later because you're like, oh, I've seen this. I know the tricks. I know how to do all this. Yeah. That's cool and stuff. But that first time, like most people playing a Souls game, that first time is spent a lot behind your shield inching forward and looking mm-hmm. around corners and stuff. Yeah. And then you have to kind of be up for the humor of, and then a boulder smacks you off the, the, the cliff and stuff. Yeah. And like, if you're trying to just book through this, yep. you're going to throw your controller at some point, take it slow, learn what it's doing, learn its rhythms. It, it, and also learn all the ways that the souls games give you to make your game easier. Summon people all the time, use these yeah. objects all the time, join this covenant and stuff. It gives you, huge gradation of difficulty within the mechanics itself and stuff but you won't know that if you don't engage with it and it's the same thing with symphony of the night it's like yeah. you don't engage with it like, honestly even if you do you might just miss the the, the two rings thing whatever yeah yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is relying on you to to go okay i want to be in on i want to be in on it with you kind of thing which is a yeah. cool thing for a game to do yeah it doesn't feel like an adversary it feels like someone going okay here let me just just go with me on this let yeah. me tell you like an interesting story or like a riddle or something yeah and it's yeah. a good thing that we have other games you know the dark souls games the the metroidvanias like hollow knight to continue sort of exploring this yeah. tradition of game design because Konami sure fucking isn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, after after this game, there were a lot of great Metroidvania Castlevanias. There were the Game Boy Advance games, you know, uh, Aria of Which Sorrow, played, Circle of the Moon. Think at they're all. fantastic, oh, and I think they're a great fucking yeah. time. And you can you yeah. can buy the the Game Boy ones now on um, a, a number of different systems. Sure, they put okay, a collection. Yeah, I definitely in. should. Um, some some people think Aria of Sorrow is better than Symphony. I've of the heard this. Um, yeah, so I work with. I think and the same. Dawn this, of yeah. Sorrow is fantastic. The DS games are are marvelous and a little bit harder to find because they were made for the DS. Then, of course, Ego, when he left Konami, went on and kickstarted a game, Bloodstained Curse of the Night, which I thoroughly enjoy. Oh, um, cool. it's, certainly, it's a little bit on the easier side, but it yeah. is. Yeah, but it didn't click with me as much. And it's because I realized that I do actually kind of just need that sort of like like gothy dra- mm. vampire shit like this. tried to do it more with like it's crystals and shards and demons. And I was like, I don't care. I kind yeah. of I need I need. I need like <laughs> the, I need that shit. I, I do yeah. need some bats in here, guys, and uh, <laughs> stuff. Also that also that that game, and this is a purely subjective, non-quality like non-quality thing. That kind of thing where when people do the two D thing, but with the three D models, instant like aesthetic turn off for me. Okay. Oh, interesting. Like I think if if you go play like Momodora, like Reverie Under Moonlight, um, or something, mm. that's a that's a two D pixel. Uh, Metroidvania from like five or six years ago. Highly recommended. Momodora. Super good. Momodora, Reverie Under Moonlight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's just, it's so lovingly made. It's really cool uh, game or something like Hollow Knight yeah. or whatever. Like that, they they have like a level of, but I, that's purely subjective, I think. Yeah. yeah. Like art wise and stuff. Cause a lot of people love Bloodstained. I just, the vibes, it was one of those things where I was like, it's like when I play like, you know, a Dark Souls game or like a, a, a Souls game that's sort of like influenced by it or something. But they're like, oh, but it takes place in like uh, the future and you're in sort of like, like you code know, what, yeah. or something like mm. that. And I'm like, this just doesn't click for much uh, as much for me just because the vibes, the vibes are off. The kind of crazy thing, too, about Iga going and, you know, having to start his own thing mm-hmm. is that. It was because at Konami, they moved him into like the mobile games division. Like they had him making like play to win games. And there's just a quote from 2014 because he did an interview with Polygon. And I wanted to read this because I think it says a lot about like just what what it means to like be a creator and and wanting to make something cool and just being hamstrung by commercial pressures. Mm -hmm. So again, this is by Michael McWhorter, Polygon, March 2014. Iga said, my style of creation, the sort of game experiences I'm really good at don't fit that trend. There was a little frustration on my part trying to make that leap. I think a lot of creators are unable to make that leap. 
I couldn't. I was frustrated with myself. But it's kind of disappointing that during this time, the fans were constantly saying, we want more core 2D Metroidvania experiences. And I was, of course, in trying this new foray, unable to appease them to make Mm. them happy as well. I couldn't make the transition, but I also couldn't continue to make the games I wanted to make. So there was some disappointment. We, we talk a lot on the show about like the commercial pressures on art mm-hmm. and how it can be so difficult to make something special. And when you look at something like Symphony of the Night, for all of its goofiness and all the weird shit mm-hmm. that's just in it for the sake of fun, it's like this was clearly a passion project created by people who just wanted to make something wild. And yeah. you lose that the moment that it becomes this commercially palatable product that's like, oh, we got to keep churning out the sequels and we got to yeah. figure out a way yeah. to leverage this into mobile and, you know, all mm-hmm. that. It's such a, like I, like I said before, it's a kitchen sink kind of game. Like, less yeah. in the way of like Final Fantasy VII where they're just like, who the fuck knows how to make this kind of game at all? What are we even doing? Yeah. Yeah. Here's, a, here's a turn-based thing and now you're snowboarding. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, okay. well, you're, you're in a goddamn submarine. Just, just go I, uh, I love to say about Final Fantasy VII that it's like the Moby Dick of games. It's the greatest first draft in video game history. It was just like, <laughs> yeah, any idea, just go for it. We'll figure it out yeah. later. That's like a lot of the later Final Fantasies I just didn't click with because it's like, yeah. a, this is, okay, this has lost its weird edges to it. Like where it's yeah. like, this is, this is, and like, that's fine. That's good. But it turns out what I liked was like, art and stuff that is that is really bumping up against its own possibilities like like what mm. like like art like i generally feel like people make the most interesting stuff or at least the stuff that's most interesting to me is usually what someone is making like when they're at the very edges of what they can actually probably do yeah. and maybe do even and maybe they don't quite pull some of it off but you can see them like bumping against that and for me at least like that's where like the really transcendent interesting stuff happens of like a uh, i don't know it's like same like uh, it's it's like a like i can see this wobbling and almost breaking i can hear like yeah. the voice kind of slightly rasping on this because you can't quite hit it but it doesn't matter because it's carried by the moment it's carried by what you're doing and i feel like a lot of stuff like that so that's why like a lot of games once they get a little too you know they're just really professionally like slickly done like that's cool and like a lot of games i like are I like that, but I do like seeing something where you can kind of spot the edges mm. and the seams of it a little bit, and yeah. which is I, you, which you can kind of see in this game a little bit because that second castle, you're like you're right, they don't actually have compelling content on the level of the first castle no. to fill a lot of it. Like it's like they aren't like okay, we got a second castle, and oh, okay, well we know we want to put this, this, and this in here, <laughs> and yeah. let's just put in a bunch of weird shit. Okay, cool, and yeah. it works, you yeah. know, kind yeah. of thing. Or like yeah, it's just like what can we do? Well, we can put in a bunch of save icons. Okay, <laughs> not important necessarily, but crucial to making this thing what it is. Well, first of all, thank you so much for, you know, coming on our show yeah. and talking with with us for three hours about Castlevania. This is somehow the um, shortest uh, yes. appearance, I feel like. <laughs> yep, yeah. yep. These two of us are like quasi-sick or something. Or like, yeah, yeah right now. Um, We're all kind of so. sick. I, I've been breathing in mold spores for the last two weeks. Oh, right. And someone else just said COVID. Okay, never mind. We're yeah. all very... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, We're all sick, mm. but what's really <laughs> sick in the other sense is this oh. new game that I understand you're working on, Scott. Yeah. Do you want to talk f- a little bit about yeah. that? You flipped your chair around Josh, uh-huh. <laughs> turned your hat backwards. Look at you. Um, yeah, working on a game called Revenant Hill. I actually can't say much about it. Okay, as yeah, of the uh, moment. yeah. You can you can There's go a look trailer. at the trailer. Yeah, Revenant yeah. Hill. Scott, uh, and stuff. Okay, okay, I, I know you're under like so many NDAs, but can you? So many, they'll murder me. Can you? Can you confirm or deny the presence of a Dracula? I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dracula. Dracula and Revenant Hill confirmed. Uh, I was, yeah, That's I was a exclusive. I was watching one of those like um, you know History Channel or whatever documentaries where it's like uh-huh. the real Dracula or something like Chasing that. Chasing Dracula. And uh, there's this one person that just they just kept referring to him as like at this point the Vlad Dracula did blah blah. But he kept they kept just calling him Vlad Dracula as if like hi I'm in name's Vlad Vlad Dracula kind of. Thing. I love that. Uh, I love like, that. Like, Vlad it's Dracula was not a guy that you messed with. Yeah. Uh, Please. So, really Dracul anyway, was my yeah, father. What, what, yeah. what, what can you tell us, whether it's about the game or about anything else? Well, if people want to, <laughs> oh, okay, you know, any topic. So, yeah, sure. Anything, if, if people, up. if people oh, want, <laughs> come on now. If people want more Scott Benson, yeah. 
What should they do? Yeah. Where can, should they you go? You can find uh, you can find me at, at Twitter at Bombsol. You can find me at Blue Sky. We'll see if that's still around whenever this comes yeah. out. Uh, whenever someone's listening to it, uh, <laughs> three days. You can find yeah. uh, me on uh, that and Ello. And what are the what have been the other Twitter? Uh, oh, Ello uh, Mastodon. Ones. I liked Ello actually as a design. I, Ello was great because it, it was like Hello. it was very MySpacey <laughs> in a lot of ways. Where it was like a very hey, huh. we want to give you galleries and places to put music and uh, blog posts and stuff. It was pretty sweet. Never going to work because it's not why people use Twitter. Are you on threads? No, I've I've not. I have an Instagram. You can find me on Instagram. There you go. Instagram, Twitter and uh, Blue Sky. And then um, I work for a company called Glory Society and the game's called Revenant Hill. You can follow and find both of those at dot coms and at uh, on Twitter. I don't think either of those have threads accounts, though. Unfortunately, (laughs) we'll uh, we'll throw like there with like Mr. Beast going like. You know, who's really hyped about the mattress sale uh, yeah. for Memorial Day? I know I am, fam. <laughs> we'll put uh, Mr. Beast loves Jerome's. We'll put links yeah. to all of that stuff down in the description. Link so links to Mr. Beast, uh, uh, check out those show notes. <laughs> check out those links and get yourself some Scott Benson goodness. And if you would like to hear more of the worst of all possible worlds, you. Much That's like us. Scott Benson can become a patron of ours at patreon.com slash worst of all five dollars a month gets you access to the uh, premium episodes that we release every other week. The you full also, backlog of premium. Episodes. Oh, there's so many of them at this point. There are. You'll it's also so full. You'll also get access to the monthly fancy movie time uh, with Brian and AJ, where they talk about movies that are fancy in nature. Yep. And uh, for 10 bucks, uh, <laughs> if you want to really, you know, show us fully your support, you'll also get access to something called Lads Cast, where every month we shoot the shit about whatever's on our mind. It's totally unscripted and unedited. Finally, if you want to give us 20 bucks for some reason, good for you. Uh, <laughs> it, there's a tier called Legs. It gives you nothing, but, you know, it show your it support sucks you off it sucks it you, gives off. you a good it gives it gives you a good feeling inside it does. yeah um yeah. not unlike warm... mr beast giving away his millions it's, that's right yeah. that's right much like that we are I the mr beast of podcasts. dracula's inverted castle <laughs> on top of his first castle <laughs> <laughs> so aj you, uh, you, you want to take us home so we talked a lot about seven of the night what many people to consider be one of the greatest games of all time and uh, i think we are all in agreement that that is certainly true and i think one of the big reasons for that is something that you brought up scott which is It is a piece of art that pokes at the edge of its own possibility and discovers this wonderful stuff on the other side. The character design is brilliant. The level design is mostly brilliant, except for the Medusa heads. Holy shit. They they (laughs) suck so fucking hard. Yeah, Um, everyone hates them. They're real bad. Um, And uh, the bosses are incredibly memorable and like gross and just cool. And the game has this a wonderful sense of humor. And when you combine all of those things together, all these disparate various instruments, it all comes together to create this tapestry of music that one might call... Mm. A rondo of blood. I'm the worst of all possible AJs. I'm the worst of all possible Brian's. And I'm the worst of all possible Josh's. See you next week.